have connection issues already. <laughs> Great. I love how when I say going live, it becomes everybody say something real quick before we go live. And then immediately <laughs> as you start talking, it goes live. Hey guys, welcome back to the Open Chest Anime Podcast with your host, the Anime Collector. And as always, or as sometimes I should say, my co host, FDDM. And Reese, okay. <laughs> He's taking that as a don't ever talk again. Okay. All right. So um, we were not planning to have a podcast today. Do you know I, we were? I, I just we heard. Were. Here's my co-host, Fudnam. Okay. So you must be really delayed. This is this is a great you, start. Running that's, why, that's why when I said we're about to go live, you started talking because you probably hadn't yeah. heard. Oh, okay, there you John. Go. Okay. So let me tell you guys a little a little story. Well, so you did say the last podcast it would be on today, so I did. But here's the thing: last podcast was on a Thursday. During that podcast, I got a text message. Boy, my hair is just not quite doing what it should. I don't care. Um, last podcast was on a Thursday, and during that podcast, I got a text message from my job telling me not to come into work on Friday. That I didn't see <laughs> because. Yeah, uh, I was doing the podcast and I wasn't checking my phone. And I got a million messages on every other thing by the time I was off. So I went into work on Friday uh, and I wasn't on the schedule. And I, I noticed the text message at like nine, sometime between nine and 920 during my first break. And I'm like, whoops, <laughs> you know, so I just went back in and kept working. They called me into the trailer and they said, hey, you're not on the schedule. I'm like, Oh no, <laughs> you know, and uh, <laughs> so uh, so they sent me home, but they also had me fill out my full time paperwork. So I am now officially full time at my job, which means oh. that I should have more or less guaranteed thirty six hours a week. Because previously, as you'll recall, the minimum requirement for them to give me was twenty hours a month. So it was very up in the air whether or not that was going to be sustainable or whatever. And to be honest. As it is right now with the amount of debt that I'm trying to pay off, um, 36 hours a week is actually not quite sustainable. But if I can pick up some extra shifts here or there, I should be able to push through and get it to the point where this actually can become sustainable with just the 36 hours, although I'll still pick up shifts for more for more cash. But it should be uh, – it's good news. This bottom line is it's good news. So anyway, um, here's the thing, though. Remember, I wasn't guaranteed – these different hours and the schedule for this week had already been posted before I got the full time notice. Right. And now was filed out the paperwork and everything. Right. Um, and it didn't have me scheduled for Friday or Saturday this week. Right. Uh, because I, I work what's known as the three twelve shift, which is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but the start of the work week is Sunday. So it's Sunday and then four days off, and then Friday, Saturday, right? And then Sunday again for the next week. So I didn't have Friday or Saturday this week. So we had thought, hey, let's talk to Augie, see if it's one of his off weeks, and maybe he can join the podcast on Thursday. That's what we planned. That's what we moved forward with. And so rather than do all the uh, articles yesterday, I instead fixed all the problems with the Dragon Ball Super Broly first impressions uh, edit. And uh, then I woke up today um, well, actually, I didn't wake up. I didn't go to sleep last night very, like, uh, maybe maybe an hour tops. Um, but uh, long story short, my daughter has an ear infection. Uh, and she was wailing, like, you wouldn't believe, all friggin' night. All night. So my wife and I are exhausted. And, we're, and I told my wife, I'm like, isn't it great that we're not doing the podcast today? And then I stop and check my schedule. And, oh, shit, I, I've been put back on the schedule for <laughs> Friday and Saturday because of the full-time thing. So we had to do it today. Anyway, uh, so bear with us because this uh, podcast is going to be a little bit different than normal because rather than pre-read every article and then reread the ones that we choose to read on the podcast, uh, I opted in a lot of cases to skip the pre-read and just read on the podcast. Um, but in, in some ways, it's kind of better because I'm less tired uh, going into it. So FDM's connection is terrible, so he might not be coming back. Well, that's just dandy. Oh, we got something. Device is not connected. Um, I can't add him. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's just wonderful. Okay. Well, we're going to just keep moving on. We're going to keep moving like, on. Oh, there he is. Hey, isn't the internet, like, 
yours solely for Hello. The <laughs> he's running he's running my it is except i don't know why it's doing this today so i plugged in my ethernet cable that is usually in my desktop and now my desktop has no uh internet for the rest of the podcast but uh oh, yeah fine. i have yeah, connection yeah. awesome well that's good yeah i just heard you say oh he's giving me the look of don't talk to me ever again i'm thinking oh no <laughs> <laughs> no, because because you were behind, you were behind on the on like you couldn't hear what I was saying until like it was delayed, right? So I said NFDM pause, yeah, and it just have the camera on you, <laughs> and because I had previously said that you were uh, that as soon as I said we're about to go live, you started talking right as it yeah. went live because of the delay. You didn't hear me say that until after you were done talking. Anyway. All yeah, right. exactly. So, so here we go. Let's let's dox everyone on the podcast. That's great. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, opening discussions. Um, FDM, do you have any? Uh, do you have any pickups? I do. Okay. I'm gonna these Which are actually quick. mainly from last. Well, week. well, we got your connection. Super quick. Okay. 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 Right. Let's right. start off with uh, leftovers from that Sentai order I had, which is. Uh, is it wrong to pick up girls in the dungeon and kill them? Uh, the movie. Ooh. Arrow of Orion. Then uh, I I eventually got this one. How to how not to summon a demon lord and kill them in a dungeon. Um, <laughs> limited edition. Which, by the way, the extras box was utterly destroyed, but I got it from Amazon.com, so returning Ouch. was not an option. But hey, the chipboard box is fine. That's all that matters. Um, and it's got the most it's got the most interesting use of lenticular cards because it'll have the character and then on the other angle it'll be the character naked. <laughs> oh that's cool. in the same pose. Yeah. Um and like, uh, like nipples and all or or like covered no. up. Oh. I mean the one looks kinda like a nipple is shaped, but like you don't actually like see anything. Like uh, it's a it, side it, shot. But anyway. tastefully naked. What? Tastefully naked. Is that is this my connection now or Reese's? Because I bet I'm 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 losing Reese. He said tastefully naked. Tastefully you know naked. Me? Tastefully naked. Yeah. I don't know what qualifies as tasteful or not at this point. But tasteful nudity. Anyway, like I was. <laughs> it took me so long to pick that up because Amazon.ca never got like. You could only buy it from like third party sellers, like right stuff for a hundred something dollars, which was mm. ridiculous. So I bought it on Amazon.com when I was making an order. And then we have Tokyo Ghoul Season 1 Limited Edition, which saves a significant amount of space in my collection. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. And it also looks a bit better to have two of those plus yeah. Root A or whatever. Re yeah, whatever it is. Isn't Root A the second one? Though? And then we Is have Tokyo Ghoul, Tokyo Ghoul Root A. Third. Well, yeah. No, oh, wait, no. You're Root right. A that's, that's that's season two. Sorry, I'm thinking of Re. Re. Yeah. Re. See, I knew it. Y'all. Re and then Root A was season. Well, well yeah, two. Well, yeah, you have both of no, those next Re, to Re. I'm looking Re right I'm at it. I'm yeah. looking right at it, Reese. Uh, uh, Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul. I don't know if you guys are talking or not, so I'm just gonna move on. Two. Black Clover. Go for it. Yep, Black Clover. Oh, God. Black Clover. I think my connection's going again, or yours is. Black Dude. Clover Season 2. Obligatory buy. Nine episodes. Nine yep. episodes for like 50 bucks. What a ripoff. Then we got Yu Yu Hakusho. Steelbook. Season three. I need to be getting picked up on this. I just finished watching season three last night, actually. Can you sue uh, Canada for bad internet? <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. All right. So, uh, well, he's pondering his internet connection. Yeah, that was Yu Yu Hakusho. So if he uh, comes back, we'll remind him where he left off. Yeah. All right. So I want to I want to jump through this super duper quick once again. If you guys want to help 
the podcast to thrive. You can do so through the uh, OCA podcast Patreon or Super Chat, whichever way you want to do it. Um, Patreon is uh, probably more lucrative for us in the long run, but I would recommend doing the one that's easier for you uh, because the decision fatigue will prevent you from actually making that decision. Uh, otherwise, did we talk about the PlayStation Five last podcast? Uh, don't think that so. was last podcast, right? We did talk about that. That it's. I was yeah. sorry. I triggered myself with decision fatigue. Yes, I got cookies. Great, wonderful. Okay. Um, and then uh, same with the anime collector Patreon, which I think is now actually higher. Oh no, we just we just had this discussion. I'm having weird deja vu today about last podcast. All right, continuing. Um. So then there's Stealth Weep, and I actually, uh, I looked at my statistics, and for the amount of work I put into Stealth Weeb, the return on the investment over the Christmas season in particular was cr- quite extraordinary. Let me put it this way. Stealth Weeb has almost overtaken the entire lifespan of the Anime Collector channel. In terms of revenue. And that's pretty cool. Considering how little. I mean I, I. Into every individual design. I actually put in some serious work. But for putting it up there. And then it's done. And not having to do anything else after that. That's pretty awesome. Oh there you go. Got him. Okay anyway. So. So I, I have some plans for some new designs. As I keep saying. Uh, that I was actually going to get to this week before I got rescheduled um, Friday and uh, Saturday. So we'll see how things go, but I do have plans for that. All right. Now, Uh, um, FDM, can you hear us? Yeah, but you're all like swimming in a river at the moment. Um, Apparently there was no internet on my ethernet. You left off at Yu Yu Hawk Show. show. Yeah, when I got in the middle of this, I was getting updated by seeing you with your Tokyo Ghoul boxes. So anyway, steel book goodness. Three of them together looks nice. Four would be even better. Will Five be even better. Art box will be then we, better. I got the first official 4K right Blu-ray. An art box, yes. Um, why is there incessant clapping going on? Um, <laughs> Space okay? Adventure Cobra the movie 4K looks freaking awesome, and. It's weird because I was expecting there to be artificial grain added because Justin Sebakis, uh, when like like he contradicted what I don't know, so he said, "Oh, why get the 4K when there's an even better looking Blu-ray from Discotech? This one's all scrubbed and cleaned up, or blah blah." When it first came that came out, and then he releases the 4K, and as far as I can tell, it looks still scrubbed and all that stuff. So I wonder if he doesn't actually like this release. But, you know, he's dis- part of Discotech, so he can't really say, oh, who, who, I didn't actually who, like this. Yeah. What was that? So, uh, yeah, I said, who even knows anymore with him? Um, so have you guys uh, been checking out the uh, Fan vs. Pro podcast that he's started? No. Yeah, I watched episode one. It was uh, pretty I, interesting. I watched, I've seen episode one, and I watched the first half of episode two, but I was editing the Broly video while I was having on, so I kind of was only half paying attention. But... Um, the comments in that chat attract a lot of people that I never have a chance to talk to, but have always wanted to have, like have a beer with. So it's kind of interesting. Um, Greg Hovarth or George Hovarth, I mean, uh, and uh, a bunch of other people that you like. You look at them like Brian Ra, I think was in there uh, in the first one. So people that you don't really think about um, that are in this, you know, that haven't done stuff like recently, but are kind of important to the industry or whatever in Mm -hmm. tangential weird ways uh, are checking those out. And it's kind of cool to get to interact with them a little bit. Uh, Anyway. um, So I want to address this. Well, actually I want to address this, not that first um, before we get too far into things, because Augie made a really big deal about it right before we went live. Um, So Jimmy G who I've just doxxed, good me, um, posted this on uh, Anime Collectors Galore Group. These are a series of tweets from the... Not in any particular order. And onward, right? So he said, 
Uh, and now we are speculating here that these are not necessarily related, right? The, but the uh, first two, are, the, the first two being connected. And right. For sure. So, so all the way back in January thirteenth, I believe this was at Anime Los Angeles or SAC Anime or something like that. Um, I the working theory that reason I have is that Justin Savakas was at this convention, and so was Robert J. Woodhead. And because they're industry people, they happen to talk to each other. And that's what this tweet is about. He says, literally spent the evening with at Animego, excitedly talking about subtitle software, obscure anime, and vintage Apple II floppy disk copy protection schemes. I don't know if it's possible to have a nerdier conversation, but it sure was fun. Now, he actually goes into a little bit more detail in the comments of that um, tweet. But regardless, um, I'm going to hold true the, the idea that I don't think... Animago slash Robert J. Woodhead are actually joining Discotech on a project in any meaningful way other than perhaps... Um, like they already put out Kimagure, so there's not really much else they can get. Right, right. so I don't I don't think it's anything Oh, besides, I guess, Urusei Yatsura. Never mind. I mean, perhaps, <laughs> but I really don't think this has... Oh, actually, that's a good... That's a good theory on it, but I, I don't think it's that big of a uh, of a thing. I, I think that him having this conversation is just him saying, to, like, you know how people go on social media and say, I just had a great night hanging out with at this person, right? Like, I want to tell the whole world that I just spent a night with you. I feel like that's what he's doing here. And he's just like, you know, doing a typical social media post, right? But the more recent ones say anyone out there with access to an LTO7 tape back backup deck Need help with a secret project, thanks. And then he said, working on a new, uh, on a secret new discotheque title, it will blow people's minds. Just trying to get it cleaned up and looking as nice as possible. So, yeah, it's, I guess it's possible that it's Urusei Yatsura, but I don't think it's worth it to, uh, um, speculate. to, to speculate on it. Uh, a couple of people here were saying Gao Geiger, which seems kind of like, uh, like who cares, <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, Urusei Yatsura. Um, Urusei Yatsura has a Blu-ray release in Japan. That would be there would be no need to clean it up. Um, anyway, I, yeah, I, I'm just uh, doxing all these people. And the yeah, that's all right. Nobody knows who they are. Angel's Egg. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna put that out. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if Disco. I don't know how it. delayed I am right now. But Urusei Yatsura, because it has a Blu-ray, I don't think they'd need to connections from an yeah. LTO thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but see, the thing is that the thing is that Discotech goes above and beyond. So this might not see. This says this says working on a, a secret new Discotech license. It doesn't necessarily say Blu-ray, right? Mm -hmm. So it's possible that if it is Urusa Yatsura, that he's cleaning up some special extra bits that they have on other things that weren't on the Japanese Blu-ray. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like what they did with um, Galaxy Railways or whatever, Galaxy Three Nine. Anyway, um, don't worry about that, Lishansky. We are going to discuss that uh, once we okay, get to uh, news. I do want to point out, Lishansky's he bought the 4K Cobra movie without even having a 4K player. Yeah, was, yeah I bought a couple. That is, that is above and beyond. I, I I did that for several movies, but then they turned out to be upscale. So fuck them. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, all right. Uh, so. This statement here, Galforce, I think that this person is hearkening that to the further down here tweet. I think that if they do another um, Kickstarter, if Discotech does, does, I'm sorry, if Animego does another Kickstarter, it'll almost certainly be Galforce, uh, my opinion. <laughs> all, all of this would be awesome, California Crisis. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that, anyway, uh, I, I just wanted to bring that up because Augie requested that we talk about it. If you guys want to share your thoughts in the chat, uh, we'll talk about them. But um, I, I think, it, as Reese said, I think it's a little I too I just hope to... he follows up that, yes, this is this the license the I was yeah. talking about that was the secret. Then he, then he releases blowing something. your mind. Kappa no Kai Kata comes out. He's like, no, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> Angels 3. Angel, no, it was Angels No, 3. I was talking about Boku no Pico. Oh, oh, by the way, the thing about... the thing about uh, Oh, do we, did they say Angel's Egg? No. Oh, okay. Did they say Angel Angel Cop or Angel's Egg just a second ago? When I was talking about that, I was gonna because if it was Angel's Egg, that would be amazing and that would be totally worthy of. Uh, yeah. Let's see real quick. I just want to see what they said because 
the one that was new for the, for today is Angel's three piece. Yeah, yeah, they said Angel's egg. So okay, I when I the the response I gave just previously about Angel's egg, um, I was gonna say Discotech being known for their accuracy and stuff, I doubt they're going to release Angel's Egg. I was actually referring to Angel Cop, which I know they actually did release. I was saying for like a Blu-ray. The thing is, Angel's Cop, uh, or Angel Cop has a, uh, has a, so far as I, I don't have the, the discotech version of it. I need to get it just to check. Uh, it has a plot that quite frankly, the original actual script, nobody is going to release that without censoring it over here. Because it's all about the protocols of the elders of Zion. Hmm. So everybody sees it as an anti uh, Semitic anime. Although anti Zionism and anti Semitism aren't the same thing. But uh, yeah. So I'm dying for a release of that that's uh, authentic and accurate to the to the original. Hmm. But they, uh, got I don't... The, they got the Blu ray out. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it, does it have a Blu-ray? Okay, yeah. So I, I, I want to get it. I want to get the discotheque one just to check it. But I that's what I was. That's my response earlier when I said angels. I, I was actually thinking of Angel Cop. Just to clarify that, if you guys were wondering why I was giving that response. Oh, I, I tried to click on the on the Streamyard window to click to close the tab. All right. So I'm friends with Shinichi Watanabe, aka Nabashin, on Facebook, uh, and uh, apparently at Ohio Con. Actually, maybe it was Ohio Con, where where. Savekas said them more because that was uh, around the same. No, just January sixteenth. I don't know, maybe because this is probably a couple days later. Yeah, it might be. It might have been where he was. Anyway, so um, his front teeth broke on on his flight to Columbus, Ohio. He couldn't he couldn't have a decent meal for five days, but with minimal nutrition, uh, he was careful not to lose his front teeth with a polygrip. So he used polygrip, I guess, to put a. I don't know. Um, Thanks to that, I was able to openly laugh with everyone during Ohio Con. So I guess he put his tooth back together using polygrip, right? Um, all right, yeah, he's being treated in Japan. People, people were talking about, like, you should have, did you not have travel insurance? You could have visited a dentist. He said he actually did have insurance. Uh, but during his stay, he was busy with the convention and couldn't go to Ohio dentistry, uh, which actually totally makes sense. Anyway, so this is... This and more amazing news about Shinichi Watanabe's uh, teeth will be coming to you in the future because I'm friends with him on Facebook. Um, hmm. he, he friends everybody. You can do it yourself if you want. Anyway, all right. So let's let's jump into this. So we have an Anaplex of America apology letter that I happened to uh, notice. Uh, I think Random Eleven shared this on uh, the Discord. So thank you for that. That's that's why we're able to view it because this is the link from the Discord. Um, <laughs> Oh, no, actually, he linked it from their actual site. So anyway, so uh, this is from January 3rd, 2020. So this is about the uh, the Kill the Kill uh, box set, uh, you know, the super expensive Ana Anaplex priced one. Um, it was brought to our attention that there is an error on the package design for the Kill the Kill complete Blu-ray box set released on December 24th. And we regretfully have to inform you that there's a discrepancy between the contents of each Blu-ray disc and what is noted on the package. The correct episodes on each Blu-ray disc should have been as follows. Disc 1, episode 1 through 4, disc 2, 5 through 9, 3, 10 through 14, 4, 15 through 19, and um, 5, 20 through 25, right? So please note that the box set includes all 25 episodes and bonus contents as advertised. For any questions or concerns regarding your purchase, please contact Right Stuff Customer Service. We sincerely apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused you. Please let us please know that providing our customers with uh, only the the highest quality products and a gratifying customer experience is our utmost priority, and we'll be sure to take extra measures to make sure that these errors don't happen in the future. Blah 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 blah. blah. Anaplex of America still has your money. Okay. Anyway, um, do you guys have anything you want to share about this, or have you already gotten that out of your system through Discord? Uh, all that basically, I mean, just. Just a mislabeled disc. That's all it is. Just the, the disc yeah. label is wrong. And Funimation has done several of them. And they don't even yeah, make much about it. The, the, yeah, okay. But the difference is that at least in the past, Funimation has um, reissued discs. Or like, for instance, Animago with the Kickstarter Blu-ray for Writing Bean yeah. accidentally used the DVD cover and then repressed every single disc with the Blu-ray art um, and sent yeah. them over to the backers and all that. So, so some companies are willing to do right by you. Anaplex of America, who charges an arm and a leg, can't be bothered. It seems. Anyway, 
But they at least acknowledge it. They at least acknowledge it. We'll give them credit. Credit where it's due. Okay, so Kyo Annie Arson News. When I got to this one, I'm like, great, more news. Okay, so final Kyoto Animation worldwide donations total over $30 million, which actually seems kind of low yeah. now that I think about it. But then I got to this one, and I thought, oh, boy, juicy. Let's read this one on air. Mother of Kyoto. Oh, actually, before we do, I want to I want to share something with you guys. So, I found something at my local grocery store. It's called root beer milk, and it tastes exactly like a root beer float. Um, I don't know why this local dairy decided this would be a good idea. Uh, here, you can see root beer milk. Maybe that should be the thumbnail. Hold on, let me get over here. I don't know. We got plenty of we have plenty of J Japan adult video mosaic FDD. Now I'm giving his pickups, um, which actually would be really funny if I just blurred out his pickups in that way. Anyway, um, all right. So back to this. L look at me getting off topic already. We're just getting started. so mother of Kyoto animation artist who died in arson wants an on-site memorial. Residents opposed. So as you'll recall, the residents wrote a letter saying. Fuck those surviving family members. We don't want to destroy the peaceful nature of our neighborhood by having otaku use it as a mecca, right? I'm paraphrasing a little bit. They they used more profanity than that, right? Anyway, all right. So I want them to build a monument, not in some other place, but in the same place where the studio was, says the uh, mother. And I, I mean, think about it. Like, yeah, it's going to make a mecca for anime fans, but it also is the, it also is going to be like the, the death site of the loved ones, you know, of, of the immediate family. Mm -hmm. um, so last Saturday marked exactly six months since the attack on Kyoto animation that resulted in 36 deaths. The company has since resumed operations and demolition work has already begun, uh, has already begun for the fire damaged building in Kyoto's Fushimi ward. But even that lengthy process is a short and simple one compared to the processing the emo con compared to processing the emotional grief of victims' families, such as the mother of Naomi Ishida. Oh, call him out there. Uh, Naomi, a color designer, was among those who died in the July 18th attack. And in speaking to reporters from NHK, her mother voiced her wishes for how the studio site should be used once the demolition work is complete. I want them to build a monument, not in some other place, but in the same place where the studio was. If there's no monument, decades from now, people will forget that it was a place so many people worked so hard creating animation and loving what they made. The elder Ishida's desire echoes the idea floated by Kyoto Animation CEO Hideaki Hata shortly after the incident. And it's a sentiment that many fans likely share. On January 18th, the six-month anniversary of the attack, a number of fans gathered at the studio site, including a 40-something father and his junior high school-aged son, who had traveled from Kanagawa Prefecture, several hours away from Kyoto, even by bullet train. For the past year, it's felt like there's a hole in my heart, said the father, whose son's interest in anime was sparked by the works of Kyoto Animation. We came to offer our prayers before the building is cleared away. All we can hope for is that the oh, come on guys proofread is that he souls is that the souls of of those who passed away can rest in peace. Gender, uh, what is it? What do we call that? Um, assuming the gender of the souls. Uh, that, that, joke, that joke got a little bit uh, too far away from the punchline being funny. Uh, all right. Also visiting the site where a woman in her twenties from Osaka. Are also visiting the site were a woman in her 20s from Osaka who came with her eight year old daughter and told reporters, I pray that my girl will be able to watch new anime from Kyoto Animation and that a bright future is waiting for the company. And in a sign of the studio's international acclaim, a Chinese college student currently studying in Tokyo also was at the site in hopes of, proce uh, in hopes of processing her sadness that she cannot put into words and pay her respects to the victims. However, there's also a group that's opposed to the idea of turning the site into a memorial, the people who actually live in the neighborhood. As discussed late at the end of last year, the Inaba 
The Inaba Higashi Neighborhood Association, made up of residents of the park at Kyoto City, where Kyoto Animation Studio is located, have said they don't want a park, mo don't want a park monument or any other sort of beacon for mourners installed. Kenya Adachi, president of the association, says that the sudden added presence of so many out-of-area visitors is disrupting residents' way of life. When we open our front doors, there are people standing there. When we need to pull our cars out of our driveways, we have to ask people to move out of the way, Adachi reports. Recently, kids can't even play outside. If they erect a monument here, there'll be a limitless number of people coming to the area, Adachi says. A prediction at least partially supported by the various far-off parts of Japan by the various far-off parts of Japan visitors came from on January 18th. I don't want the site to be turned into a place that threatens residents' lifestyles. You know what I would do? Oh, also, FDM's gone. Um, you know what I would do? <laughs> if I were these people in Japan, if they don't put up a monument, I would go anyway. I would go anyway as a fuck you <laughs> to the to the residents. Um, and I would stand outside the hot dog stand or whatever they turn it into. And I would do it on the anniversary of this arson every month for the rest of my life until they put up a monument. You know what I mean? Like, how ridiculous is this? Like, they have to understand. Okay, maybe. Okay, this is the sixth month anniversary. Maybe a year anniversary, things will be like a double. Or, right? Maybe um, at a year. But a year and six months, two years, three years, it's going to get less and less over the years. You know what yeah. I mean? To the point where it's not even going to matter. To the point where you're going to have like the average Joe Schmo stroller. You're not even going to realize that it's just a, that it's a guy coming to that event. It just looks like somebody, some guy walking through your neighborhood. Oh, and he stopped there and, and paid his respects and left. It's going to be that it's going to, slow down to a trickle that much there's not going to yeah. be like i mean unless they have like a tour like a like a tour bus that brings people from neighboring places to go see the kill Annie site that is now a hot dog stand or some shit uh they're not gonna have like a huge influx of people um this is probably i mean let me put it this way i understand i understand how they feel because i'm fucking tired of reading about things related to this arson. I'm tired of covering it on the podcast. So imagine actually living in that neighborhood and having news reporters there every day and having all sorts of different bullshit happen every day. I get it. It's tiring. It's been six months, you know, but imagine being in New York, living in New York during nine yeah. 11. I mean, they got past it. I think you will too. <laughs> so, Oh, Caribou Coon says, Justin's told me what the secret release is. I can say I'm almost positive those other tweets aren't related. Don't think anyone's guessed it yet either. Cool get, though. Awesome. Well, that's good to uh, good to know. I did actually see him on Twitter talking with you. Um, so that's uh, – I will, I will lend credence. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, this is um, a YouTuber that we brought on to, uh, to Anituber Anthology to do – the Ultraman short, I believe. Pretty sure. Yes, that, that sounds right. Um, I, sorry, I was confusing the Ultraman one with uh, with the Gridman one. I'm like, no, that was that was uh, Mudan. No, but yeah, Caribou Coon uh, stepped in at like the 11th hour and knocked out an amazing uh, entry into our collaborative effort that Mr. Nice Guy put together. Um, so anyway, uh, so it's cool to hear. Uh, and I totally lost track of where we're at in the. Uh... <laughs> I don't want the site to be turned to a place that threatens residents' lifestyles. Uh, Adachi's concerns, which are sh uh, which are shared by many local families, can't be dismissed out of hand. While Kyoto Animation is a highly respected company in an increasingly international industry, its Fushimi studio was located in a quiet, mostly residential neighborhood. Having such a tragic event occur on uh, having such a tragic event occur on in their community, I have no idea what they're trying to say there. Probably just the in part. 
Uh, having such a tragic event occur in their community was undoubt has undoubtedly been traumatic and stressful for those who live nearby. There are private homes literally across the street from the studio site. Uh, how to weigh the desire of the fans and the victims' families to tangibly, pres to tangibly preserve the memories of those who died versus residents need to be able to live their lives without being constantly reminded of the arson attack is a question without an easy answer, but one that definitely needs to be given as proper consideration. See, here's the amazing thing about modern life. You can move to a different neighborhood. You can't move where the arson took place. End of story, right? All right, so let's find out what Fudnam is. Damn. Can you, okay, so if you're still watching, can you at least uh, follow along on just like the, the normal youtube -y, uh version and, uh, and like chat with us in the chat, maybe? I don't know. Um, all right, so so that's it for the uh, Kiwani stuff. Hmm. I need to start moving much faster if we're going to get through this stuff. Okay. Funimation-led global anime companies set up anime heroes for Aussie wildlife GoFundMe for Australian bushfires. Okay, so that was a real mouthful of a article title. Uh, but it's pretty abundantly obvious what this is. Uh, a GoFundMe for the Australian bushfires. But what you might not have known, uh, I'm just going to basically read this part right here. Uh, from, from September 2019, the current Australian bushfire season has decimated the country, burning an estimated 18.6 million hectares or 72,000 square miles, or an area larger than the country of Syria or Washington State. So think about how big Washington State is and imagine that entire thing is on fire. That's what they've dealt with. Um, now, if you guys want to donate, you can do so on the GoFundMe page here. Uh, but we are going to move on for the sake of time. I just want to make sure I brought this to everybody's attention. All right. Japanese suicides reach record low. The annual number of suicides in Japan has fallen below 20,000 for the first time since records began to be kept in 1978. In addition to having the lowest number of suicides, a mere 19,959, so just barely under the 2,000 mark uh, in terms of absolute numbers, uh, 2019 also saw the 10th successive drop in relative terms. Uh, the death rate fell to 15.8 per 100,000 people, down from 16.5 in 2018. Over the course of the last decade, the number of people killing themselves almost halved from its high point in the 2000s. A decade during which annual suicides never fell before, um, never fell before, sorry, never fell below 30,000. Men continue to kill themselves in far higher numbers than women, although the gender gap in Japan is considerably smaller than in, in many Western countries. The Japanese government is committed to reducing suicides to 13 per 100,000, which would put it on a similar level to Western nations such as Germany and the United States. Now, I got a bit here from uh, Sorry News 24. Um, the improvement isn't something that simply came out of that simply came out because of the decrease in Japan's total population either. The ministry says that in 2019 there were 15.8 suicides per 100,000. Basic stuff I just read. Uh, no single factor was credited with the change, though mental health and depression-related health risks have become an increasingly open topic in government and private sector discussions, at least compared to generations past. So I found that an interesting thing because yeah, that's obvious. But I never really thought about mental health specifically, like in the terms of what you think of when you think of mental health, as being the leading cause of the suicides in Japan. I always thought of it as pressure from school or work, mm -hmm. um, or dishonor, dishonoring your family and killing yourself to save face or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Or a combination of the two. Uh, so I never actually really thought about um, depression leading the suicide rate in Japan versus external factors, which I guess anxiety and stress is m a mental health concern. But uh, I'm just saying, like, I hadn't, I hadn't really thought about it before. All right. In some sad news here, Dragon Ball's iconic English narrator Bryce Armstrong passed away. Uh, if you're a fan of the original Dragon Ball anime's Funimation dub, you no doubt remember the classic English narration by voice actor Bryce Armstrong. 
The Dragon Ball world is currently mourning Armstrong's passing, which occurred on January 10th as the result of natural causes. Armstrong was 84 years old. Uh, let's see. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't just the narrator. He also played uh, Captain Ginyu and Lord Slug in the Dragon Ball Z movie, and provided some voices for Dragon Ball GT, as well as ta uh, taking on roles like Igari and Baki the Grappler, Timor Morco in Full Metal Alchemist, and various voices in Detective Conan, Yu Yu Hakusho, and the first Fruits Basket anime. Armstrong's talent managing, uh, management company, Mary Collins Agency, issued a, or released a statement, including the following comment with fellow voice actor Christopher Sabat. Christopher Sabat, a Mary Collins Agency voice actor and co found and sorry and founder of Okratron 5000, uh, worked with and directed Bryce often. Bryce was the kindest, funniest person I've ever known. He was always humble, never in a bad mood, not the attitude you'd expect from such an industry legend. I mean, I don't really think about him as an industry legend for the roles that they listed. He might have done other things, you know what I mean? Like how we talked about um, prior to the podcast starting that um, Porky Pig voice actor. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to that. We won't ruin that right now. Anyway, um, all right. So I wasn't going to share this because I thought it was just Sora News 24 um, covering something we already talked about from a different outlet on the last podcast, but it actually is a continuation in a different place. Cause the other one was Kagawa or Kanagawa or whatever. Uh, so this is actually something different. So the mayor of Osaka wants to legally control when kids can and can't use smartphones in their own home. Uh, bunch of chat just popped in out of nowhere um i i think i think Streamyard uh was having trouble loading them so <laughs> danny yeah. says Cur oh he wants he, this has to be related to the uh to the disco tech thing so da danny behind the scenes has been pestering me for us to do a watch club on um kabuto the anime kabuto karasu tengu kabuto so him saying this is wishful thinking that uh that that's what Justin Savake has picked up to for the license. That'd be hilarious mm -hmm. if it were. Um, Lee Shonsky says suicide is all about mental health. He's like, yeah, I just like I said, I didn't think about it in the absolute terms of where I mentally put mental health categorically in my head. You know. Anyway, all right. So let's let's get through this. So, a 55 year old politician thinks kids are ditching school because they're spending too much time on their phones. A uh, 55-year-old politician probably has kids who spend too much time on their phones and therefore thinks that they need to police the rest of, you know, everything going on. So as the mayor of Osaka, a city of more than 2.6 million residents, Ichiro Matsui has a lot of people to look out for. But during a press conference at City Hall on January 15th, it was the children he was thinking of. Specifically, Matsui is concerned about kids who aren't attending uh, who aren't attending their classes. Truancy is a complicated problem and not always a matter of plain laziness or lack of gumption on the youngster's part. Apathetic teachers, impractical lesson, lesson plans that fail to engage young minds, and bullying by classmates can all convince kids that going to school is the last thing that they want to do that day. During the press conference, though, Matsui said that he thinks more kids would attend class if the law forced them to get off their smartphones, which I just love. I love this idea of how the fuck are you going to enforce this? Unless you're going to pass a law that literally makes it so that, uh, so that smartphone manufacturers have to have a chip in the phone that makes it so that if the user through facial recognition or something else is under a certain age, it shuts off at a certain time. You know what I mean? <laughs> But I just love this idea. I'll, I'll never talking. turn a phone on again if that happens. <laughs> yeah, you? <laughs> because you've got, the, you've got the face of a child. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just love this. I, I'm sure it would be more Japan specific, you know, like regioning or whatever. But uh, but yeah, I just I love the idea that they're going to try to make this a matter of law uh, because it's completely unenforceable, right? I mean, it's ridiculous. So, uh, and we talked about in the last podcast how the uh, the Kagawa Prefecture, yeah, Kagawa, um, how they had uh, put forth all this stuff. They're like, yeah, there aren't any punishments if you don't obey this thing we're saying, but it is a matter of law. And it's like, and that's what I said last 
last podcast is that a law you don't enforce doesn't exist. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so what if we were to enact laws bringing, uh, barring children from using smartphones past a certain time at night or other ordinances? Matsui mused. The 55-year-old politician also said that he's instructed the, the Osaka Municipal Board of Education to investigate the potential effectiveness time-based bans and other smartphone use restrictions would have on boosting class attendance. So here's the thing. Are you going to ban the use of... See, because the Kagawa Prefecture one, they were talking about, about at night, right? There was like a limit for video gaming and, and stuff. Uh, that was going to be like an hour or a half hour. I think it was like a half hour on, or no, it was an hour on weekdays and 90 minutes on holidays and weekends. Right. But the thing is like, if, and there was also a curfew, right? So if you're going to, if you're going to limit kids, smartphone uses, it would have to be during the time when they'd already be in school. Right. Otherwise like that, the, uh, the entire idea has to be that they're using their phones at home and they're so lazy uh, and like hooked into the social media that they're not going to school because they're on their phone, right? So you'd have to make it do. Um, boy, everybody wants us to talk about the adult cream pie coming to McDonald's Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a cream pie that's not on the kids' menu, okay? <laughs> 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 you know, I, oh, I see you actually for once used your own account. Thank you, Reese. <laughs> Instead of my account on here. Anyway, all right. So, uh, um, damn it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, so regarding regarding the okay, Lishansky, I'll find it. I'll find it and send it to you. <laughs> um, we didn't, we didn't actually cover that that. Article. We uh, talked Reese. about Ronald filling him in the back room. Yeah, that's that's literally about it. That's all you're gonna get out of it. Is basically what Reese just said. Okay. Anyway, all right. Back back to this. I love how off topic and hard it is to to stay on when when the absolute like most necessary <sighs> day to stay on task is the day that we're completely off the wall. Um, so he's instructed them to time-based bans, blah, blah, blah. Matsui's singling out of smartphones comes only a few days after legislators in Kagawa's prefectural assembly unveiled their draft of a new law that would prohibit elementary, middle, and high school students from playing video games for more than one hour on weekdays and more than 90 minutes on Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays. A key difference, though, is that while video games are first and foremost an entertainment medium, smartphones, by providing access to the internet's vast wealth of respected periodicals. <laughs> By providing access to the internet's vast wealth of respected periodicals, scholarly literature and instructional videos are arguably as much a learning tool as a toy. I love how they had to say that with a straight face and not say the internet, vast wealth of porn, right? <laughs> you know. Because most of these kids are probably using it for that. Um, ostensibly, a ban would also prohibit young people from, from talking or listening to music on their smartphones, uh, but would allow them to do such activities with flip phones or MP3 players. Uh, the mayor didn't elaborate on exactly how he felt smartphone use was contributing to truancy, but his concern about the devices being used at night suggests he thinks that kids are ditching school because they're sleepy. Okay, so they actually want to prevent you from using smartphones at night. Let me let me tell you something that's going to happen here, Mayor of Osaka. If you prevent the kids from using their phones at night, they're going to use them during class. Yeah. You're not going to stop the kid who has no interest in going to school and is more interested in what's on his social media, you aren't going to stop him from using his phone. You're just going to change when he can use it. And you will create a black market for, uh, for jailbroken phones or whatever to get around the thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And my friend, that is a gateway to using the dark web, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of anything else related to that. It creates more problems than solves. I don't know. It's just I'm just like you gotta speak to a to in the language that the um that the politician is gonna understand. You gotta use terms like dangerous and gateway drug and all those things, right? <laughs> to people to there's a trickle down effect. It's a uh, 
uh, a slippery slope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. Uh, da, da, da. This seems like an unlikely scenario, though, considering they'd either have to be snoozing at home with their parents' blessing or waking up, heading out the door, and finding somewhere else to catch some Zs instead of going to school. Matsui did recognize, however, that enforcing a ban, as well as handing down criminal penalties to a finish, fucking hell, I just love the idea. So Japan has this thing I talk about all the time, where in order to not bias the general public as to whether or not somebody is guilty... Before the trial, all the footage of them take, being taken to and from the courthouse and stuff, they have to mosaic the handcuffs, right? So that you don't know that they're... It's like when somebody flips somebody off on, on uh, Jerry Springer and they, they, um, they mosaic the finger. Like you don't fucking know what he's doing kind of thing, right? I just love the idea of some kid getting picked up by the police and did like a perp walk around and they have to like blur out his, his handcuffed hands. And it was like young Timmy was, was uh, arrested today for um, illegal smartphone use. Right. <laughs> Be, uh, past eight o'clock. Right. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> it was 8.01 PM. Uh, Matsui did recognize, however, that enforcing a ban, as well as handing down criminal penalties to offenders, either the children themselves or their parents, would be difficult. It would likely be an ideological law, but it would, uh, but it is probably important for us to enact such an ordinance, he asserted. Yeah, that's always gone well. When you, en when you enact a law just for the ideological outcome rather than the, uh, rather than the likely outcome, <laughs> that's never gone bad in the past. Hmm. Especially when you're banning something like, you know, alcohol or anything else. Incidentally, Matsui's being born in 1964 means that he was around for the uh, for the cries that society was on the brink of ruin because of such wicked forms of as entertainment, such wicked forms of entertainment as rock music, action movies, and video games. But maybe <laughs> he thinks we're just lucky enough to dodge that uh, dodge a bullet each of those times. All right, so let's uh, jump into some live action news. I got some quick things here. Princess Jellyfish Creator's food detective manga gets a live action adaptation. So I don't know about you, but the fact that this guy's hair is parted on the wrong side means that this is going to be a terrible live action movie. <laughs> because every drawing, his hair is parted that way. Yeah. And now we've got like they need, they should have just filmed the whole movie against a mirror. <laughs> oh, they're just rever just reverse all the footage and make him make him or something. Yeah, sure, they could have done that. That would have also worked. A a another good uh, you know option there. Anyway, but uh, yeah, so this is a thing is it's coming out in live action. Uh, King and Prince member Ren Nagase set to star in Yawamushi Petal live action film. So. Uh, that's it. They're making a live action Yamuji pedal. I don't want to read any of the other stuff. No. Uh, Tonkatsu DJ Agataro live action film finally gets release date. So the thing that I find funny about this is that the premise alone is pretty funny, right? Because Tonkatsu is a food, right? Mm -hmm. It's like um, fried chicken or whatever. I don't even remember. Um, I think it is fried chicken, right? So for some reason... Is that notorious a B.I.G.? I don't know. Please let this have notorious B.I.G. Like a CG replication of him because he's he was shot and killed. <laughs> yeah. That would be the funniest fucking shit. Or the guy they had for the live action movie. They did a uh, um, a biography on Biggie. Right? That would be so hilarious. I just want to see this totally serious movie. In live action, that would be that would be so funny. Anyway, um, all right. So continuing here, all right. So winter twenty twenty TV anime Rike Koi viewed more than ten million times in five days in China. So this has to be. Like the whole series was put up at once or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's no way 
that uh, this is the one we talked about about them um, proving scientifically that they that they were in love, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so th this can't possibly be for like the one episode because there's like a well, I guess it could. There's a billion people in China. Anyway, so uh, this is popular in China apparently. Yeah, this is the one with the math and the proving mathematically science fell in love. So I tried to prove it. What? <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, all right. So continuing here. Uh, NHK prepare, prepares to stream to smart devices starting in spring. So one of the things I find funny about this is that Crunchyroll writes all of these articles about pop-up shops and stuff in Japan. And they write them as though they're like, head over to this ward to go check out the pop-up shop. Like they're writing them specifically for Japanese people. But they write them in English. And Crunchyroll's blocked in Japan. At least the streaming service, right? So I just think it's really funny that they do this. But um, on an unrelated note, uh, it's kind of interesting that NHK is finally getting into the streaming game. Because, uh, like, where the fuck have you been? You know, the rest of the world, at least the West, has, like, they... Some Crunchyroll has been fortunate to have accidentally, along with Netflix, gotten into this game way early, right? Um, then mm -hmm. Funimation was already at least big enough that they, and they had like a niche that they could fill, that they were able to, to dive in head first, right? High Dive is like trying to stay on behind. Um, yeah. And uh, Disney, Disney Plus, Disney probably spent like billions of dollars launching Disney Plus, getting all their stuff categorized with the stuff digitized and everything. They probably spent a zillion dollars on that, right? Uh, and then NHK is like, oh shit, maybe we should get in on this, you know? <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's kind of interesting. It'll be interesting to see if, uh, if this actually creates any partnerships, um, the way that Funimation and Crunchyroll were, were at one time, uh, partnered. Right. So anyway, um, I went through a bunch of articles on this, but thought that the tweet summed it up, uh, better than sitting through anything else. Netflix is going to stream the studio Ghibli films worldwide, except the U S Canada and Japan. Uh, because we talked about this previously that the Ghibli films were, for the U.S. at least, going to be on um, HBO. HBO or HBO Max or whatever it's called, right? Something like that, yeah. Nope. Something, something to that effect. All right. Depressing news for me. Dragon Quest <laughs> Your Story CG movie hits Netflix on February 13th. Now, I have access to Netflix, and that's great and everything, but I really wanted to see this in theaters. I hope and I don't, the, the, the fun doesn't go this far out. Oh, fuck no. I'll, I will find a place where that's showing in Japan and get a ticket and go <laughs> if, if that's if that news ever comes up. Like, uh, no way am I going to miss seeing that in theaters. Um, but I, the thing that really disappointed me about this is that I wanted to go to California and get together with some of my um, animator uh, co-workers and friends and whatnot and see the movie with them and see what they thought about it and get my first impressions with other animators and industry professionals to talk about the artistic stuff behind it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and now I can't do that because it's on Netflix. And it's just the last time I did a Netflix first impressions was the live action Death Note movie. Um, that didn't go very well. Well, the recording for it, I had that issue where for some reason mine and Duo's audio kept desyncing at different rates compared to the video we had recorded, which is a pain in the ass in itself. But the video, I don't know why the first impression series just really works in a car because we're moving. You know what I mean? Like the backdrop is moving. There's like in there's like a it's like when in in the show House. Have you ever watched House MD? No. With you, with you, Lori, you've never seen it. Nope. Well, in the show House, they are constantly walking through the corridors of the hospital even though they're not actually going anywhere. It's this psychological trick that, that script uh, screenplay writers use uh, to make it seem like the story is progressing when all they're doing is giving you exposition or something, right? So they walk constantly. And there's a nice trick that when you do a vlog, if you're moving, it feels more engaging than if you're sitting in front of the couch talking to the camera. You know what I mean? So that's one of the things that I feel like that particular video lacked in because we're just sitting like we do for the podcast um you know in front of the camera for the webcam you know uh and duo had kind of a bland bank a black a bland backdrop right uh and anything everything but you know you got to figure it out the first time around uh before you can 
um, know how to do it the right the next time. But anyway, this is coming to Netflix on February 13th, and it should it looks amazing. I can't wait to see it, but I'm just a little disappointed in that. And loop on the first uh, better get to a theater. Podcast magic. I'll use up the rest of you just to make that happen. I wonder who would release it though. Oh yeah, TMS might though. Yeah, but TMS also would have had the rights to Dragon Quest, mm. right? Don't you think? Because uh. they have Dying with Eye Boken, don't they? Yeah. So fuck this doesn't this this seems equally likely now that it could go either way. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think Lupin has a bit more of an audience over here. Audience? Yeah, true. All right. So, Weathering With You anime, uh, sorry, Weathering With You anime film surpasses your name in North American box office. So, this is pretty breathtaking yeah. because Box Office Mojo estimates that as of January 20th, the first six days of release, Weathering With You will have brought in over $5.05 million U.S. dollars, mm -hmm. surpassing that of your name, which grossed U.S. $5.017 million during its entire North American run. How long was so, your name in theaters? At least a couple months. Because mm -hmm. I didn't see that opening day. I I just happened to, when, I, when my uh, mother-in-law came to visit um my wife and i went to go see kizu monogatari which was only airing for like one or two days mm -hmm. but your name was still in theater so we were able to see that too you know mm -hmm. so that that that's why those those videos came out or, or like um we made those roughly around the same time um now i will say this though one of the things my wife brought up in the uh one of the, one of the things my wife brought up in the first impressions um, was that your name, and I think a countless articles have been written about the same topic. Your name, in fact, I think when we were talking about the uh, grab him by the Shinkai, <laughs> um, that uh, that Yoshitaka Ama, or uh, what is his name? Um, no, Toru Shinkai. No, no, no. The 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 uh, Gundam, the Gundam guy. Uh, Gundam guy. I can't think. Why? Of why can't I think of his name now? I'm only thinking of the of the artist who does the Final Fantasy stuff that is named in the podcast title. <laughs> you know, Hunter Yoshiki Amano. Amano. So Yoshi Taka Amano and Yoshiki Amano. Do they both have Amano? That that, that is correct, no, right? I don't, I don't know. Hang on. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm like losing my mind here. Anyway, but we they talked about it in that article too. But the thing my wife brought up is that um, your name has this um, quality to it. That Yoshiyuki you, Tomino. Tomino. Thank you. Yoshiyuki Tomino. Thank you. So um, you that your name has a uh, a quality to it that even people who aren't into anime enjoy it. Right. Like yeah. you can show that because it's and, and they talked about it in that article that your name doesn't have outlandish, you know, cosplay style clothing that, you know, like they, they dress re relatively normal they There's don't, all this stuff they, about it. They don't do the it's, mafia stuff for like comedy or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's accessible to the general audience. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so. So it, what I was going to say is that I think this actually kind of does make it's it's impressive how quickly it, it beat your name. Let me put let me put that out there. But I do think that it makes sense that it would beat your name because a lot of people, like my brother-in-law for example, saw your name because somebody, i.e. my wife and I, showed it to him on Blu-ray, mm -hmm. not in theaters. You know what I mean? Right. So you create fans of Makoto Shinkai, who are going to go check out the next thing. You create those fans through um, through sharing the Blu-ray and DVD experience, right? So they're more likely to, to go to the next movie in, in the franchise or in the director's repertoire or whatever um, because they became fans after the screening had already like gone through theaters and was and all that. Anyway, so yeah. They also said here, this also makes Weathering With You the highest grossing film from G-Kids, bringing in double the amount than Mary and the Witch's Flower in 2018, which was previously the highest uh, earning one over there uh, previously, right? The highest earner for G-Kids previously. 
Over the weekend, starting Friday, Weathering With You played in 486 locations across North America, bringing in uh, $3,561 per screen over the three-day long weekend, or an average of $1,187 per day, which has a per screen average above Jumanji The Next Level and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. That's crazy. Yeah. Though due to the limited screens, the Makoto Shinkai film missed out on the on the top 10 um, over the weekend, averaging 13th place overall, just above the re-release of, jo- of Jojo Rabbit, but below Parasite. So, uh, Reese, I have to run outside. I hear somebody screaming. Uh, can you just entertain for a second? All right. I'll be, I'll be right back. I went and saw this on uh, Thursday night. I thought it was a pretty good movie. Um, very pretty. Um, and I lost my thought. Uh, it's pretty. I did think it was as good as your name, personally. Um, let's see. Crap. I ended up getting a, um, a poster, which I don't, AC said he, when he went and saw, he didn't get it, get one, but, which I was kind of surprised about. And, um. I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> What's the chat doing? Chat, chat, chat. Here she is. Heidi of the Alps, Vicky the Viking, and Sinbad. Thank you. I only had to do it. I probably won't be watching this. Great news. Chat, got anything else to say about uh, Makoto Shinkai? Help fill the empty space? Nothing from the chat. Lichonsky says, I haven't seen the film, nor have I seen your name. You haven't seen your name. I would just recommend that you do that.
Where's Uh, I just now saw AC's comment or, or messages, so I'm gonna figure out how to open these up. Tab to the window. So moving on, the Battle Events confirmed Ride Your Wave film will screen in the US on February 19th. Battle Events confirmed a Friday that will screen Saki Yuasa's Ride Your Wave film in the United States on February 19th for a one night only screening. The screen will be in Japanese with English subtitles. The company is showing an English subtitled trailer of the film and also listing theater locations on its website. So. I saw the trailer for this at the beginning of, of uh, Weathering with You. It looks pretty good. Um, probably won't see it in theaters, unfortunately. Uh, some of the issues had been listing earlier this week that they would screen the film on February 19th. Let's just grab this one. The film opened in Japan on June, on June 21st last year, ranked number nine, and it's opening weekend. G can license the, the uh, not to license the film in July. All right, moving on. The Dead Rise for Doro Hidoro X Zombie Land Saga collaboration. The Zombie Idol's work is never done, even when they're between seasons. Case in point, Frank and Frank Churchill's cameo in the promotional video art for seasons for this season's Doro Hidoro. The, the Zombieland Saga stars appear in the key visual for Dora Hidoro's third episode, a series about an amnesiac, lizard-headed man navigating a divided world of humans and sorcerers in search of his identity. is currently running on Netflix in Japan. The third episode will, will touch on the events of the Living Dead Day, an annual occurrence during which humans killed by such sorcerers are resurrected as zombies and fought off by the locals. That sounds awesome. I really would. I mean, so this being um, airing on Netflix in Japan, I hope this we get this over here soon because I've been. I was actually very interested in watching uh, Dora Hidoro. So right, I'm back. If you want me to take over. Yeah, I can. I can hear your your rattling. I'm so, rattling. You're the the desk. The. Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to interrupt you, but I wanted I, I turned on I turned the mic back on so you'd know I was there. Okay, yeah. so yeah, um so just to clarify, this does not appear to be a actual crossover in the show. Uh, it's just it's a just crossover a... for like the promotional stuff because they're both made by Studio Mappa. Yep. Right? So that, that's that. But that's uh, you. That's mine. I gotta remove mine. Okay. Um yeah, so anyway, um sorry for the uh, lot of empty space in there. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Sorry, I had to step away for a minute. I don't have any idea what happened. <laughs> I just had to administer some band-aids. Um, so anyway, uh, new lyrical Nanoha project announced. Uh, that's it. Katakawa confirms a new Maiden Abyss sequel. Now, I saw a couple different articles covering this, and the only one that actually took to task this thing I'm going to show you was Sankaku Complex. So they said, Katakawa has released a trailer for a new sequel to 
uh, to fantasy anime Made in Abyss, which some may interpret as, conf as confirmation of a second TV season. Uh, yeah. As a result of the trailer's use of the word shirizu, or series, some are taking it as proof that a second TV season is in the works. However, it is possible that this word may be referring to the franchise as a whole rather than a TV season. So like a continuation in the series rather than a continuation series. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so it's possible. So either a series or a movie or something. Yeah. Maybe a, anyway. That would be a... <laughs> Fruits Basket Season 2 anime confirmed for spring 2020. So, uh, yeah, that's oh. continuing. It, it makes sense because uh, they've got a lot more manga than the original series was able to complete, you know? Um, so it makes sense for them to continue. Boy, I wish FDM was here for this. New yeah. Digimon Adventure TV anime announced for April 2020. This, okay, so it's going to be called Digimon Adventure... And there's an actual colon here, right? So it says, mm -hmm. note that the TV anime's title has a colon at the end to denote it from the previous TV anime and film series. Uh, so it actually has a colon at the end, right? So you see it here? Digimon mm -hmm. Adventure colon. Digimon Adventure colon. All right. Anyway, um, it's going to, uh, the series will follow Tai as a fifth grader in Agumon in 2020 Tokyo. Basically a reboot. Yeah, so here's what they say. This is the translated synopsis of the series uh, from their newly overhauled website. 2020 AD. Networks are now an integral part of human life, but humans are unaware that beyond the network, an infinite world exists, the digital world, and the creatures called Digimon that live there. A large-scale network failure occurs in the Tokyo metropolitan area, a flickering signal or garbled... Uh, a flickering signal or garbled screens are prevalent. Uh, the news, the news report that it's a cyber, that it's cyber terrorism. Uh, the main character is Taichi Yagami. I'm a gay, uh, a fifth grader <laughs> living in, uh, in tower apartment in a tower apartment near Tokyo. He was home alone to prepare for the weekend summer camp. His mother and sister Hikari, uh, were on their way to Shibuya, but got stuck in an affected train with failed brakes. Taichi buries, sorry, Taichi hurries to Shibuya to help his mother and sister, but the moment he uh, heads to the platform at the station, a mysterious phenomenon overtakes the Digi-Destin, transporting Taichi to the digital world. The children meet their partner Digimon and embark on an unknown adventure. So that sounds very much like it's a reboot, right? And they say it has not been announced whether Digimon Adventure, with the colon, is a remake of the original TV anime or an, quote, alternate world, which exists in the Digimon canon, making these Digimon Adventure kids different from those in the upcoming Digimon Adventure Last, Ev Last Evolution Kizuna anime film. So uh, as soon as we learn more, we will share with you. Um, I don't know how I, mean, I don't know how I would feel about it. Considering like nostalgia for the original series and the, the original cast, and yeah, how, how they used some of them for like the adventure, the try movies, but yeah, they cast a lot of them, but it worked for what they did because the voice actors and actresses are older and the characters right. are older. But going yeah. back to that younger age, they probably couldn't do the younger voices, so they yeah. had to make a I, I don't know new dub cast. So Lishansky says, I only like Dragon Quest for Akira Toriyama's designs. Probably won't be watching this referring to the uh, the dragon. That uses his designs. Yeah. They're just CG. And they, it looks really amazing. The uh, Like it's coming from a from an animator and VFX artist, like I'm dying to see it because it looks breathtaking uh, with mm -hmm. the like, uh, it's just such a step up in terms of the rendering that they did. A, such a huge step up from, from like, Shrek or How to Train Your Dragon or any of the more recent, you know, animation things. Even, like, uh, Frozen or whatever. It's a big step up rendering-wise from those. So, we anyway. got some We got some new stuff for, for another new thing for Netflix. If you want to. Okay. Talk, I'll, I'll uh, put it in like the it. comment of the... I'll put it in the comments of the doc. Can you send it to me in the private chat so I can open it? Oh, yeah, that's you good. Do both so that I actually yeah, have I'll, it accessible. The things 
Yeah. Actually, just send it to me in the private chat because I'll just I'll just move the tab over to the other screen so that I can remember to add it later. There you go. Private chat. Oh, put in the comments. There we go. I'm not seeing it in the private chat. Uh, oh, did you send it? You sent it in the Facebook, Facebook chat, chat. Facebook chat. Sorry. I, I, I was talking about the private chat on StreamYard. That's all right, though. Uh, Netflix adds Pokemon Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution film on February 27th. Boy, I wish I could have gone to see this uh, since I had the wristband and everything. But no, it's all right. Um, okay, so February 27th, we get to see this and compare it to the uh, old one. Boy, uh, Pikachu's face sure looks... Uh, <laughs> Interesting. He's got like a bull box now. <laughs> anyway, all right. So uh, I saw nothing it. else to say other than that, I guess. But that's that's cool. Uh, you saw it? Did you say you saw it? No, I, I said that's that. Okay. All right. So here we go. Uh, Sword Art Online director teases upcoming mystery anime. That's all we know. That is literally all we know. Okay. Um, yeah. This guy uh, previously directed Silver Spoon and Erased. Um, and the other names attached so far are uh, dancer slash actor Yusuke Onuki and Steinsgate and Death Note star Mamoru Miyano. Uh, the veil will be lifted. They're going to tell us what it actually is on January 23rd. TV anime Gegege no Kitaro's sixth, sixth season to end its two-year run in March. So again, this is the um, sixth season. Anime. I don't know if it, I don't know if when they say sixth season they mean the sixth season of the most recent one, but this is actually the sixth time it's been adapted into an anime. Mm -hmm. um, but they are mentioning here the latest series has already entered its final chapter, uh, Naruri Hyon arc, since its seventy sixth episode aired on October 6, twenty nineteen. So it's a decision that has been expected, meaning that they are about to conclude the adaptation of the entire manga. So they're not they're not surprised that it's uh, ending because they're about to finish it finally, which is cool. That's awesome to know that the final, most recent adaptation actually got through the entire thing. You know, yeah. whereas a lot of times we talk about anime where it gets adapted before it finishes, yeah, uh, the manga, and then it gets it gets hung up in like we'll be really cool if Claymore got adapted again. Yeah. Where did this got six of them? They had they tried doing this thing. Dude, it started in black and white. Uh, this is an old, old show. Yeah, this was uh, originally adapted back when it was like silent, almost like a silent movie, almost. Oh, like, I don't wow. remember exactly, but it was. It's in black and white. It's very old, from the '60s. I think '68, maybe '63. Yeah, is the original one. Um, oh, I'm in the. But also, setting. funny bit, little bit, tidbit about that: the Digimon series is taking over its time slot. Oh, really? That's funny. <laughs> um, Uh, so I want to I want to address these things before we get to her. Uh, Danny says, "Invoke podcast magic for Heidi of the Alps, Vicky the Viking, Sinbad, Maya the Bee, and Pinocchio." So I, I'm going to just say um, I'm going to invoke podcast magic because this was after I said podcast magic for Lupin getting in the theater. Um, uh, podcast magic for every anime that has ever been released VHS or Laserdisc only in the States to get a DVD slash Blu-ray release. Podcast Four, magic. Slash, slash 4K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, age gap romantic comedy manga Koi to Yobi Niha Kimochi Warui gets TV anime. So this translates to it's gross to call this love. Um, and uh, um, my wife started reading this today. I, I shared this article with her. Uh, and she started reading it today. She says that it's funny. Like the manga is legitimately funny, but she doesn't see it. Like she, this is what she said. She said a lot of times romantic comedy manga has a certain timing or Japanese specific comedy to it that works really well on paper and falls apart um, or doesn't, doesn't come across as good in anime form. Um, so for instance, Maid Sama is something she brought up specifically. Um, so she talked about uh, certain stuff that works in, in manga. Like, I guess there's a specific scene in this where the guy is, the guy gets saved by this girl because he like falls onto the train tracks or falls down a flight of stairs or near the train station or whatever. And she catches him with her umbrella and she, um, 
uh, he goes to thank her. And like in one panel, he's there. And then all of a sudden he disappears. And it's because he's like on the ground uh, kneeling before her begging kind of thing. Um, and that's something that like that comedy and that that kind of works in uh, in manga, but like it doesn't always translate well in anime. So she said it was funny, but uh, she's apprehensive about it turning into an anime and being uh, <laughs> adaptable, you know. Anyway, mm-hmm. new Love Like Project coming, which at first I was like, fuck this, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But it says here, the Love Live franchise will be continuing onward as a new project has been announced to be in the works, unfortunately lacking specific details as to whether or not it's perhaps a new game, uh, a new anime game or something else. Yeah, it's probably a mobile game. Who knows? Um, Anyway. All right. So continuing here, no manga news. And I haven't read this one yet, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at it here. Koei Tecmo Games sues Chinese mobile game company for copyright infringement. Koei Tecmo claims Hangzhou Jedi technology used game images and music without permission. I wonder if they use the word Jedi without permission as well. <laughs> so Koei Tecmo Games announced on Friday that it has filed a lawsuit in the Tokyo District Court against Chinese mobile game company Hangzhou Jedi Technology Co. Ltd. for copyright infringement. Koei Tecmo claimed that Hangzhou God, that Jedi Technology Co. Uh, has continually used copyrighted images in music from the Dynasty Warriors, Nobunaga's Ambition, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and Taiko Rishiden games uh, game series for its game apps, web adver- for its game apps web advertisements without permission. Uh, Koei Tecmo has been involved in a lawsuit that Capcom initially filed with the Osaka District Court in July 2014. The intellectual, pro- uh, the intellectual property high court in Tokyo had ruled in favor of Capcom on September 11th in the company's lawsuit against Koei Tecmo Games for patent infringement. The court ruled that Koei Tecmo Games infringed on patent number three, oh, who cares, patent A, which relates to the Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors game series, and patent B, which relates to the Fatal Frame game series. Koei Tecmo filed an appeal on September 24th. Hangzhou Jedi Academy was found, or Jedi Games, was founded in 2013, the mobile game company under the name of the company Beko.com. Okay. Uh, launched the Kingdom's Go nomination game in 2016 and the My Kingdom game in 2014. The company took its name from the Jedi Knight in the Star Wars series. It seems obvious, doesn't it? Doesn't it? <laughs> anyway. All right. So that's the news there. I'll be interested to see how that goes. Um, and we got in our release news already. Mill Creek powers up with Ultraman Ace and Ultraman X Blu-rays in 2020. So um, I just want to address real quick you guys remember Just Beyond? The discotheque released a Blu-ray of? Yeah. You know it exists. We've talked about it. I know, I know it exists, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a tokusatsu uh, like Ultraman. Um, that, uh, the Flip Otaku, the, the guy who hosts the uh, channel for the podcast that Justin Savakas has started, Fan vs. Pro, um, he won't shut up about Just Beyond. And they talked in the whole second episode of their podcast, which is this last Monday, um, about how incredible that Blu-ray looks. Like, because Savakas puts in a lot of work, right, to make things look outstanding uh, compared to other shit. So it'll be interesting to see a a comparison uh, between this horrendous shit that looks like on these, on these YouTube videos uh, compared to how just beyond looked. Um, Although I, I, I'm going to buy it regardless. I want, I want to have Ultraman on Blu-ray. I kind of am a little bit saddened that, because I know that Ultraman got dubbed over here, not, not Ultraman Ace necessarily, but I know that Ultraman got a dub over here at one time. And so far as I know, it's never been put out on DVD. Hmm. I don't think it, I don't think the entire thing got dubbed. I think it was a lot like Power Rangers. You know, where like they selectively chose certain episodes rather than uh, the whole series, but I still would like to have it, you know. Anyway, um, so TMS tweeted this out uh, today. They said, Hi, I'm Miyazaki, directed episode 155, will be available in dub as part of the loop on the third part two, collection four. So um, I just wanted to bring this up to acknowledge, just so you guys know. This is Lupin Part 2, which was previously dubbed partially by uh, Genion, but these specific episodes, 145 and 155, were not dubbed by Genion. 
it's awesome to know that discotech has got them in in the um in the set and everything that they that they did their due diligence to get them even though they're not the same voice actors and stuff yeah. and this is what we were talking about earlier that um reese said that he has yet to watch these dubs because the voice actor who plays lupon is the voice actor for porky pig right so anyway uh, um yeah i just yeah. thought that it would be it, it, uh, it was just kind of a weird you know point out thing for for kms yeah. Because Miyazaki directed both 145 and 155, but I think they they did a, a highlight tweet about 145 like yesterday, maybe. Um, Sorry, say that again. Wings of Albatross. Yeah. And um, but yeah, both of the both of them were both directed by Hayao Miyazaki, and they were both released as um, Tales of the Wolf on VHS right. over here in the early 90s. Right, because at the time they the uh, Lupin the Arson yeah. Lupin estate uh, was making it difficult to use the name Lupin. Yep. So yep. they uh, same, they, they called same him situation, instead of same situation that happened with um like the earlier dubs for uh, Mr. Yamamo, Castle Cagliostro, the mm -hmm. dub for the Fuma Conspiracy, the dub for um Bye Bye Lady Liberty, so, dub by Manga UK. I've seen the dub for Fuma Conspiracy. Yeah. Um, I don't think they called him the wolf in the DVD release. And they did. They did? I don't know. No, 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 you're right. Um, I, I have two different copies. Rupon. They one. called it Rupon. In, Rupon. In the yes. Right. That's right. right That's right. it. In fact, no, not, in fact not the I have it right here. Yeah. Which movie Rupon. is that? Rupon. They called him Rupon instead of Lupon. Yeah, this is what happened. Okay, here. I got it. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So this was the re-release. Oh, I hate you. This out. I got you got the green case, and so I got the black case. Oh, I dude, I bought this at DVD Planet when it when it was still in business. So uh, this was the original set, Rupon the Third, the yep. film of conspiracy. Yeah. So this was released by Animago. Interesting. While we're and, talking about it, <laughs> wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> if they, if, <laughs> so Animago and Discotech. Right, and what you know, I know. put a Blu ray release for that. That'd be badass. That'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that that's the thing that's going to make anime fans' heads explode or whatever he said, but uh, <laughs> but that would be great. <laughs> Maybe your nuts would explode. No, I don't know. <laughs> All right, hey, so hey, we hey, got... hey, rub your hands together for that podcast magic. Yes. There we go. Yeah, that, that sounds like hands are together. Nothing broke. <laughs> <laughs> Reese could see what I was doing in the little image at the bottom. <laughs> Nobody else could, so it just sounded nasty. <laughs> All right. So we've got here the wonderful adventures of Niels Holgerson. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure I'm looking at. Um, fuck. How do? How am I gonna screw this up in the middle of my joke? This is a uh, bison. Well, fuck, Garzy Swing. <laughs> this is um, <laughs> or a Battler Dunvine. Damn it, that would have been way better if I had said that the first time and not had to think about it. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't seen Garzy's Wing or or a Battler Dunvine, uh, for some reason, the way the main character gets to bison well is by riding naked on a giant fucking goose. <laughs> <laughs> or, or small, whatever the fuck it is, like this is exactly like this. It's just funny that this is this exact thing is is like a like a Amer the Netflix adaptation of. <laughs> well, All right, so that's cool. That's good to know. Um, uh, I'll address it now. Nils Hol Holgerson license is great news. Uh, yes, I didn't want to say that earlier because I don't want to. I don't want to ruin the. Thank that's you. That's on standard definition. Yoshi, you did he answer that when we were looking? I the chat I has know. been coming in in chunks for me. Yeah. Um, it hasn't been loading properly, so I've missed a bit of it. Unfortunately, you should get a pop out window for the YouTube chat that goes up. I right should. <laughs> I could. I'll do that. I'll do that at a, at, a, at, at next podcast maybe. Um, <laughs> all right. So anyway, uh, Lupin the Third, Fujiko's lie. Pretty excited. Yeah. 
Um, this one actually they use the exact same image that's on the art box instead of altering it like they did for the for Glamon's right. Bloodstray and Jigen's Gravestone. You use they didn't alter it whatsoever except for adding like pink to the for the loop on and then mm-hmm. adding the English title for Fujiko's Lie at the bottom. That's yeah. all they did. It's the exact same image. And and the the Blu-ray band at the top, but because previously it was an art box, so it didn't have that right. So anyway, um, but yeah, uh, this movie's great. Um, definitely get it. it. This is a great price for it too. You know, yeah, Plus you the, uh, really cheap. I mean, it's only like an hour, not even an hour long, so it makes sense. Really? So, yeah, yeah, fifty-seven minutes. Like Fifty it, minutes. Well, but the thing is that when you're watching it, it yeah. doesn't feel like it's less than an hour long. But weirdly, that's kind of a good thing. You know what I mean? Oh crap. Um, Send it through the other chat, dude. <laughs> I, yeah, I fucked that up. Um, yeah, so uh, it's a good movie. It, it's one of um, the private chat on the on the yeah. Thank yeah, you. there you go. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> my uh, burned by my mouse. Not not my mouse does the double click. Yeah. So um, a certain somebody sent me something that I think I shouldn't show for the podcast. Um, Reese, in your spare time, why don't you go to Sentai and go check out the uh, listing for the Steelbook of Monster Musume and check out what the disc wells look like on the inside of the case. Oh, okay. All right. So in the in the previous one. Um, I'll just pull them up here because that's where they are. Yeah, so they did use the art box for each one, but but they changed it with with this one, unfortunately. Yeah, they changed that one and Jigen's gravestone. I don't know why the fuck they have to put the stupid smoke coming out. It's the, it's the least appropriate one to have smoke coming out of it. Uh. Jigen's gravestone makes perfect sense because it's fucking Jigen, you know. Mm. <laughs> anyway, I want <laughs> these Japanese ones. These look awesome. Yeah. Anyway, but that's cool. All right, so uh, so back at it. Oh, they don't have Anti Magic Academy, the thirty fifth Test Platoon Blu Ray. Um, I don't know anything about this, but uh, Discotech's putting it out, so it's probably going to be good and not not dubbed. Yeah, that's um, a, a rather oh, new series, I think. Just yeah, like, just to address so that it's abundantly clear. Um, this is dubbed. Uh, they have a brand new dub for it, uh, and it's. It's good. It's really good. Christina V as um, Fujiko is like spot on. So uh, anyway, uh, Angels oh, Three Keys. <laughs> on the uh, disc wells. Uh, Do you think we could show that on stream? Uh, you probably could get away with it. I probably could, right? Can you link it in the uh, private chat? All right, everyone, send your kiddos to bed. <laughs> Private chat. See something naughty. Okay, it's just the disc cubs. Yeah, it's, it's just nothing. The disc cub. <laughs> YouTube moderators, it's not a nipple. It's a disc cub. All right, so this is what the inside of them of them look like. It's just a pink gradient, and because the little popper thing is there for the disc, it looks like a nipple. You are mistaken if you think it's a nipple. <laughs> it's, it's, it, not even, it's, it's not even it's human. It's a steel book human. case. It's a yeah. steel book case. It's not a nipple. <laughs> but the, what's funny is that the <laughs> the design on here also kind of looks like um, a bikini top or whatever. Yeah. Right? You take the so bikini like off. And and oh bikini. Yeah, that's really funny. I have to get it now. Fuck, $99? Wait, no, you, you should get this one because it doesn't have any of the extras. Well, I'm not gonna buy the stupid. Uh, I'm not gonna buy the stupid like limited edition that was the oversized and ridiculous. Yeah. They did, no, no. I'm not talking about the. I'm not. I'm talking. I'm not talking about physical extras. I'm talking about on disc extras. The on disc extras that were no, on no, the original. But I'm saying I'm not gonna get the limited edition one. Oh well, yeah, get the, get, like the, get the or regular or edition. Don't get the yeah. steel book. Sure, I'll get it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, I want the steel book. Uh, how if you can tell me? Don't buy this. How am I gonna go buy this moment in anime physical release history right here? 
I buy everything that's clever. I bought grab him by the pussy and grab him by the pussy again, make hentai great again. Just because of the title. I'm never going to take that shit out of the shrink wrap. I just had to own it because it was clever as shit. Did you get this Royal Space Force one? Or not that yet? No, that's I didn't. I didn't buy that one. I Yeah, huh? because it was the... the I, I don't know about that one. I, I want to, you know, I, I kind of want to reach out to adult source media and get the, uh, the whoever's in charge over there to come on the podcast and, uh, and shoot the shit with us for a while. <laughs> I think that'd be really funny just to have, have them on and talk. No. Anyway, all right. Okay. So anyway, hold that's the, back, uh, up, back up, back up, back up, go back to the, go back to the, um, that thing. Anyone? Keep going. That this one. one. If you were to pause that and look at it from above, isn't that kind of phallic? <laughs> oh, cause yeah, cause it's like the balls down here. <laughs> yeah, sure, I guess. Demonetized now for generic phallic <laughs> shapes. Okay, Angels three piece, uh, one through twelve of the episodes for the series. Is this an older series or a newer series? It kind of looks like an older series to uh, me. What's the date on the? Do they have dates on the thing and the details? Put on with it. Year created twenty seventeen. Oh. It, must, it must be 2017 then. It, it looks like a 2008 anime <laughs> to me. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so that's our. Uh, uh, look it up. News. Three piece. I'm just looking up three piece on. Uh, I, I, I have to that. wonder if there are some other uh, Sentai things that we haven't seen yet. Tenchi no 3P. July 2017 to September 2017. It's only 12. What the hell? Oh, yeah, I guess it will be. July, August, September, yeah. So, 12 episodes. Yeah, 2017. So, not rated very high. The rest of these aren't really important, right? Or we've already nah, covered them? There's no new one. We already covered the new ones last podcast. So, we, did we cover Monster Masume? They just didn't have it on right stuff previously, the image? I think we did cover it when it was originally. Um, but it sold. probably just didn't have the image or whatever. That's why we didn't yeah. know about it until yeah, now. Yeah, it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the packaging fine. shot on right stuff. It just has the cover on yeah. it. Okay. All right. So, continuing here, we have some, Comments. like, a lot to get through on these. Which I thought would be way easier than uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump through some of these actually. Okay, kick the vending machine. Uh, so we we sort of talked about this previously, but there's a GIF. There's a GIF now. Oh, See, the, these are the stickers you get. Oh, I wonder if these are. Uh, I wonder if these are like the ones that racing cars put on there. Okay, well, I, I'll get demonetized for sure if I don't. If I don't do this, I'm going to check something real quick. <laughs> One of my friends has a uh, business where he makes the stickers that go on. I don't know what it is about Ricer street racing cars that they, they put these like bumper sticker things on their windows and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't remember like, his website. Like de decals or? Yeah. Let me, let me do a Google search real quick to pull up his website. I don't know if he's, I don't know if his website's still up. He's got it. No, that's not his uh, his brand is called Loser Kid. He's he has a passion for good products. He has a Loser Kid on Etsy. Where's your website? I thought it was Loser dot Kid, but it's not coming up with the. I don't know. I don't know if he's still doing it. To be honest. Loser Kids Club. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, shit. What was his? I don't know. Anyway, um, I can't find it off the, uh, like right now. But let me. 
Let me just search this real quick. Uh, his um, his SEO has got to be shit because I don't see if he does have his site up still. But he was making some great products uh, for a while, like with like spot gold leafing and everything. Amazing products. Uh, anyway, let's talk about this product. New virgin killing sweater. So do you guys remember? The, if you haven't seen the old virgin killer sweater, it's on... Uh, I, I feature it in the... Oh, shit, no, I don't. That video hasn't come out yet. Um, in the 2018 <laughs> hentai grab bag video, we, we filmed... Uh, in the booth at uh, j -List booth, and they had it on display. But yeah, that video hasn't come out yet. Okay, so um, so this one, if you ask me, looks to be a bunch of sleeves sewn together like a human centipede of sleeves. Now, thank goodness that the uh, tweets don't embed because I would definitely get demonetized for the actual photo of the woman wearing it. But uh, yeah, so this is a thing. Moving on. Hmm. Tenga releases masturbatory age-shaped chocolates for Valentine's Day in Japan. This, of course, being their newest... Uh, oh, the newest chocolates are actually like shaped that way? Nice. Yeah, the chocolates. They actually have chocolates now that are shaped like the, the Sweet Love Cup. Uh, that's what they had last year, right? The Sweet Love Cups. But the, the chocolates are actually shaped like the Tenga. So, sweet pleasure for your mouth. With a play on the word for penis in Japanese. <laughs> so I think the Japanese word for penis is chimpo. So Japanese masturbatory aid manufacturer Tenga is known around the world for its wide range of innovative self-pleasuring devices, which allow men to please, which allow men to please themselves on the go while women feel the joy of a matcha tea. Oh, while women feel the joy of matcha tea whisks. So I, I didn't verbalize this, but I thought it was really funny. Ver first of all, a tea ceremony for your private parts. Um, I thought that was a great way to start that article. Versa Seed says, are the chocolates cream filled? Um, that's a good question. Let's read on. I haven't read the articles yet. Uh, this fun approach to pleasure seeps over into Tenga's fun marketing campaigns and collaborations with everyday brands as well. And now that Valentine's Day is coming up, they're attracting attention with a special release for the romantic holiday called the Tenga Sweet Love Cup. They, they have the same name as previously. So I guess it's like the Tenga Sweet Love Cup 2.0. Uh, so on the outside, the new product looks like a Tenga self-pleasuring device, but on the inside, it's filled with a sweet surprise, chocolate. Tenga first released the Sweet Love Cup for Valentine's Day last year, but back then it was filled with ordinary cube-shaped foil-wrapped chocolates. This year, they've improved on the original product by filling them with chocolate shaped like the Tenga Masturbatory AIDS. This year's lineup comes in three different varieties, covering high cacao, above, matcha, below, and strawberry. No vanilla, huh? <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Helping to generate more excitement around the product is the fact that the Japanese slang word for penis, for <laughs> penis, yep, that's it. No, for penis is chinko, which sounds like choco or chocolate. That's a stretch. Chinkolette, maybe, if you want to call it that. That sounds like such a <laughs> Chinese racist slur, though. <laughs> Get over here, you. It's like, <laughs> it's like half Chinese, half black. Get over here, you little chinklet. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's easily the worst joke I've ever heard. <laughs> the missing part in the circle between chi and ko makes all the difference between the two words. Okay. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. Because Cho, okay, so this is what they mean. So Cho is written with the symbol for Chi, and then a little tiny version of Yo in order to turn it from Chi into Cho. Hmm. So that's why they look the same when it's spelled out. They don't sound the same, but they look the same, is what they're saying. Okay. In fact, if I had actually had embedded tweets, we could probably have seen this and figured it out and avoided the embarrassment. Hmm. 
Yeah, okay. So so they're saying that so this is Maru. Uh, okay, so in Japanese uh, they have Batsu and Maru, right? And typically Maru is like um, like on a test, if you get a question right, they circle it with red. If you get it wrong, they put an X through it, right? So on um, when you get your homework back, it's marked up like crazy because they circle everything you did right. Like every math problem you got right, circle, 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 right? Um, and uh, this symbol is often used as like a um, almost like a censorship thing. Uh, like we talked about when we were um, talking about the uh, um, was it the uniforms? There was like a love hotel that had like school uniforms inspired by local high schools or whatever, uh, and they had the name of the school, but with like a portion of it instead of continuing the kanji, they put the circle right as as a censor like hiding thing. So they're so they're saying that. Um, they're, they put that over what would be the, the middle syllable, basically, right? So it becomes, instead of uh, chocolate, it becomes penis or whatever, right? Anyway, um, so that's it. That's what I'm trying to get at, I guess. All right. Um, so according to Tenga, the Sweet Love Cup isn't designed to be penetrated like their usual self-pleasuring aids, but it's perfect for events or parties where a bit of fun wordplay is appreciated. The new product comes filled with 10 chinko slash choco inside for 500 yen, US 454, uh, plus tax, although those wanting more sweet simulation can opt for a tower of love cups starting at 30 cups for 16,200 yen, through 100 for 50,000 yen, or 300 for 150,000 yen. Yes. I mean, yeah. Tower record stores in major cities around Japan will be displaying these Tenga Towers as part of the promotion and will be selling the Sweet Love Cups to customers as well. On sale from the 10th of January for a limited time, the Love Cups will make a great addition to that other Tenga edible in our pantry, the Furika rice topping. Furikake rice topping. Yeah, they had this too. We didn't. T we didn't cover this one. the foodie kake is uh, um, this. You, it's like if you get like a poke bowl, you you might they they add it at the end if you want it. It's a it's a <laughs> salty or savory sort of uh, kind of like everything bagel seasoning without like the grilled onions or whatever. Anyway, um, all right. So McDonald's Japan's cute Sanrio toy has a disastrous misprint. Okay, I'm just gonna open this in. Um, Safari, because it'll be way faster. Because I'm not going to read it. I just want to show you what what happened. That's kind of funny. Um, so let me just stop screen sharing, and I'll start again on the this one. Okay. So this uh, this toy is supposed to. So it says a dog doesn't need two of those, no matter how cute they are. So this is the normal dog, right? Here's the toy. They accidentally got a misprint on it, right? And then Japan went crazy with it on, on the internet. <laughs> That's the Fist of the North Star symbol, uh, the Big Dipper. Big, big Dipper. Yeah. This one says mine is the exact opposite. Mine came completely blank all over, but this is like a whole different thing. As in, it doesn't have like the face painted on or whatever, I guess. <laughs> to turn a cute Disney butt into a delicious tart so you can haul. What? Oh, dear. Okay. All right. So anyway, back to, uh, let me see if the next article is also on. No, it's not. Okay. We'll go back to this. There, there are probably going to be more. I don't remember. Yeah. There's at least one more I got to do through, uh, through Safari to see the embedded tweets. Okay. Light up your life with a Rimuru lamp and other adventuring goods from that time I got reincarnated as a slime. So they have these, um, I don't know what this is, a T point card, hmm. uh, but yeah, they got these lamps. 
uh, in a backpack and a, and a towel that seems so like completely definitely fits in with the rest of the stuff from the show. Um, continuing Evangelion teddy bears make angel fighting a little cozier. This one freaks me out a lot. Those eyes. Right. But, but then also there's this Evangelion conquers the cover of smart men's fashion magazine. Smart with all lowercase. That's the name of the magazine. This is a fashion magazine. And because this is Japanese fashion, it comes with these fashionable coin purses. That no, is definitely so something that belongs in a fucking fashion magazine, right? Jesus. I have your life. All right. <laughs> okay. So let me show this real quick. So this is kind of interesting. Um, perfect otaku gear. New hanging file case cover. Display merch for sale and trade at conventions. So they invented this thing. This is actually pretty neat, right? So it, it allows your hands to be free. It straps around your waist or whatever. And has like, a, like you can put your wares in here. Um, so you can just go around to the long lines at Comic Cat and whatever. And uh, take out like your pins or whatever you're going to sell. This is disgusting. Gross. Seniors are losing memory to earwax. Fuck, I gotta get my earwax. All right. Um, anyway, it's a kind of a neat idea. Um, and I think somebody's trying to get into my office right now. What's up? I don't know. What time did that take her? Oh, yeah, I don't know. What time do you have to leave? Okay. I'll see what happens. I don't think we're going to do that, but I'll try. I'll, I'll try. Okay. All right. So let me, uh, let me just pull up this other one real quick and just get it over with while we're still, while we're still, uh, here. So the weird and wonderful things you'll find at Japanese love hotels. So this is just like a compilation thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's this one. The hotel advertises itself with King Kong. Statue of Liberty. Many use elaborate castles to turn heads like this impressive establishment in Osaka. So the point is to be seen from a distance, right? Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So this one's a giant fucking UFO. Hotel Moshi Moshi uh, Piero, the legend of sh of the Shibuya Street and the hotel for for this reason. Let's <laughs> call it hotel for this reason, like for banging it, banging it out. Banana and donuts study room and hotel make you come. Ika se so okay yeah uh, all right. Um, and then, what's this one? I haven't seen the embedded tweet one with the actual video. It says, once you enter a love hotel, it can be a long way from the entrance to the front desk reception area. Holy shit. There's like a jazzy Japanese song playing. <laughs> Probably from anime. Holy crap! They didn't even get there. <laughs> anyway, so um, <laughs> payment is usually done via uh, machines to save guests from feeling awkward or embarrassed. That's just good sense. So this one uh, surprised you with their pneumatic tube payment system, like at a Costco or whatever. So this one has like a, a, a uh, what do you call this, recessed painting or recessed sculpture of the Last Supper. This one has a bathtub that lights up with bright colors. So I'm trying to get to one in particular I saw. Slot machines. Uh, this one has a ergonomic phone, I guess. Whatever the fuck that is. Uh, and then this one <laughs> places their electric massager like samurai swords. Oh. This, of course, being the famous Hitachi, which is not usually used for its intended purpose of massaging. 
Uh, and bubbles in the bath can end up looking like this. Themed rooms. This one is set up like a train carriage. Oh, that's fucking great. If that's your fetish, this is like such a great find. Like if your fetish is is the you know Japanese fetish of groping on a train or whatever, you could totally do your loved one in the train. That's fucking genius. I don't even have that fetish, but I want to do it in there. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an elementary school. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, the S and M dungeons. Okay. Oh, I'll be honest. I do see. Immediately after I brought up how great it would be to do it in the train one, and as soon as I saw this, I realized how fucking disgusting these rooms probably are. Like the beds can be cleaned. You know, pretty easily, I think. But I don't know about cleaning off the train stuff. Like, that would be gross. <laughs> like, somebody would actually, like, get off in just a hard-to-reach place just to just to spite whoever comes in next. Pun intended. Sorry, say that again? It's like somebody would just get off and, and just, like, aim for some place that's, hard, that's out of the way and hard to reach yeah. just to spite whoever comes in next. Under like like uh like you're you're doing it with your like why is it on the ceiling, Janet? No, no, like you're doing it with your significant partner, and they're like, "Ah, oh, where do you want to finish? Quick, underneath the seat." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get up in the laundry rack. All right. So uh, this is kind of funny. They actually have like a a blocker, so you can't see the license plates and shit. <laughs> That's really funny. Wow, they've got a. Uh, this person has quite the collection. So, you know what? So my wife and I have been talking about going to Japan for years. Um, we've we've been wanting to do it for her uh, for her birthday uh, this last year, like her thirtieth, um, and we didn't because money has just not been where it needs to be, and also kids, you know, just hasn't quite been optimum, but. If I get to take her and we don't bring the kids, I'm going to go to every love motel I can and do this with it. Like the guy's got all the cards and stuff. That'd just be so funny. Dude. Like to, to do, like get all the lists of the weirdest love motels and just go to each one. Cause they're pretty cheap. If I understand correctly they're cause you can rent them for like an hour kind of thing. Yeah. Like 40 minutes or something. Yeah. That'd be so fun. I want to go to this train station one just to see it in person. <laughs> Film a, a short movie there. Not a porno, like a short movie on the train. Anyway. All right. Anyway, back to uh, Jim Bean got sold to a Japanese company. Maybe it'll finally taste uh, drinkable. Oh, okay. Well, Hold still on. Trying, I, I mean, segue terribly back. Talk about Jim, you said Jim Beam, that the alcohol, right? Yeah. 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 Watching Weathering with you, I noticed Maker's Mark in there. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that, there was a lot of that was exactly Maker's Mark with the with yeah, the. No, I talked about this on the last podcast. Um, I, I, I think I talked about Maker's Did Mark. Did I talk about it on the last podcast? Yeah, yeah, because I talked about I talked about, about losing the footage. Yeah, well, I, yeah, but I was saying they used a lot of actual products. Yeah, yeah, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't whack Donald's it, right? Yeah. Anyway. But they're just so, yeah. so weird because I mean, my dad drank uh, Maker's Mark. I was like, holy shit, that's Maker's Mark. Yeah. You recognize it because it's got the uh, the melted the wax, uh, candle wax or whatever the on wax it? wax seal on it, yeah. I mean, it's literally, I mean, it's literally it's, good. Maker's Mark. On, I mean, it was like... Yeah. But that's just... So, I mean, it's not like Jack Daniels or anything. It's, yeah. but it's like... It's like a detailed down to earth, you know, what people would drink without being, oh, it's just Jack, oh, oh, yeah, oh, just use Jack Daniels, you know. That they use Jack thing. Daniels in Shark Skin Man and Peach Hip Girl, or whatever that movie is called with Tadanobu Asano. There's a really funny line in it. I thought it was funny because this is when I first started drinking. I like Jack, that's one of my favorite drinks. Um, because I'm a, I'm a whiskey pleb or whatever, but um. 
but they uh, they import it from America at the bar that the guy works at or whatever. And he has the girl taste. He's like, wow, that's really good. And it's so cheap, right? <laughs> and it's like, seems like a product placement for Jack. Day. It's so funny the way it comes across. <laughs> anyway, so here's another article about, about more of these love, uh, love hotels. I don't know. What the fuck is going on in this one? <laughs> so yeah, if you got that fetish, <laughs> they even got the railing so you can cuff yourself to the bed. That's a callback to our other article about the uh, arsonist and the uh, nurse. Oh, okay. Anyway, let's get back on to, uh, that was a good, a good break, but, uh, that was, let's get back to the other stuff. So let me, um, let me actually, let me, let me pull up. I'm just going to go through these other ones before we get back to the other, uh, the other browser, since we have these right here, moving life-size Gundam statues debut date and new home in Japan announced. So I don't actually want to read this. Oh, so um, Random Eleven says a lot of cons ban people from selling merch and shit in lines for panels and such. Um, so, uh, and, and Reese is trying to say hawking to people standing in lines. Yeah, so um, referring to um, Comiket specifically, like it's, it's not as... Uh, because because <coughs> Comiket in particular is like it's the entire existence of it is fan products and stuff. They are less um, they don't care as much, right? Like that's the purpose of going to Comiket is to sell your wares, and it's mm -hmm. like nobody cares, you know. So anyway, um, but yeah, um, you could also I, I saw a guy during the 2016 election. He he built something out of cardboard that was exactly basically what I just showed you, but he had a thing and it had pins on one side that were anti-Trump, and then he would turn around after he after he had gotten to a bunch of people there who gave him a bunch of money, he would turn around and he would flip it around and it had a bunch of pro pins, pro Trump pins on the other one. He went to the other lines, right? To because it was at one of Trump's rallies where they have like thousands and thousands of people in line and then they have all the people protesting it you know outside so he would sell at the rallies all these pro trump pins that he made and then he would just flip it around and go to the anti trump side and sell it to them that's that's good business all right back to this okay so uh Moving life-size... So the point is you don't need to, to do it at a convention. Anyway, moving life-size Gundam statues debut date, no, new home in Japan out. So I'm not going to cover uh, reading this because I just I don't want to waste the time right now. Um, but there's a video, which I will show... Actually, hold on. I have to... I hope this doesn't disconnect me. I have to switch on my VPN to Japan because otherwise you can't watch this video. Reese, have you seen Robotics Notes? No. You haven't? Oh, fuck. No, I have not. Because that's exactly what's happening here. I, I might have to refresh, actually, because I, I s did the thing after I loaded the page for my VPN. Because it's supposed to move. Oh, really? That's it? Fuck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I downloaded a video of this of it actually moving a little bit further than just its leg lifting. I guess not. Okay, well, anyway, that was a waste of time. So, uh, yeah, it's funny that I got to turn off my VPN before I forget. Okay, that was great. All right, so anyway, yeah. Um, robotics notes they build a mech like the whole thing about that show is them building a mech and the mech goes to move and it's like the the least um like the wow factor just isn't there and it's like it's so heavy they're, they're dealing with like like legitimately if you were to build a mech these are all the problems you'd run into so the thing's like on wheel and it just kind of like scoots forward and shit anyway all right so moving back to i think i got one more here yeah oh no two more 
actually, I think I skipped one. Am I going to cover something weird? Then? Oh, that's in the other news. Okay. So uh, this one I'm also going to just skip through. Japanese newspaper issues correction over hilarious, uh, over hilarious Harry and Meghan photo. So basically, <laughs> it's not this photo, but that is quite funny too. Um, what happened was they shared this photo in their uh, newspaper, right? And then they also had to issue uh, the next day or whatever. This is the retraction because they accidentally used a photo of their wax models at a museum. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's a lifelike. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he looks pretty good, but she looks very like fake and plastic, right? Oh, and I he's doing the difference doing until the, you said it. He's doing the Freemason uh, hand in the coat like Napoleon and George Washington and all the other ones who have ever yeah. done it. Hidden hand. Anyway, um, I think it's funny that they included that in the uh, thing. So I was going to do this because I thought we were going to have FDM with his, with his super godlike internet. Um, shall we continually push this down until Augie's back on the podcast? It's up to you. Oil may leak. Chat, I need, I need one person to be decisive on this. Should we wait for Augie to talk about fish dishes that are so good that oil may leak from your anus? I'll give you a minute. <laughs> All right, so I, I got some other news here. I actually, um, this is going to be another quick one. I don't really want to. Wait for Augie, what Johnson says. Okay. Now we'll wait for Augie. All right. Tokyo invests 43 billion yen into flying vehicles. So I kind of don't want to bother uh, going through this very short article, um, uh, but I looked at the, uh, the link here, and that photo... That photo does appear to be what they're talking about. That just looks so, like all kinds of bad ideas. Yeah, right? <laughs> so the, the thing is, they're like, it has the ability to take off and land without a runway. And I'm like, no fucking duh. It's a helicopter. <laughs> 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 it's a, I'm, I'm it's just a like, fucking drone is what it is. What people that? that keep saying, oh, we're going to have flying cars. Like, Right, exactly. Pretty we have that. already on the ground. Yeah. Like everybody so, needs to be a certified pilot. That's not gonna right. happen. <laughs> oh. Anyway, it's just not feasible. So Mojo Vision is working on an AR for augmented reality contact lens. Now, I'm gonna read this article real quick. First of all, I just want to say that um, I imagine that actually wearing one of these would probably be extremely irritating to your eye over time. Um, yeah. But uh, but let's read it real, real quick. It so that they what they house. claim what they claim in their press releases and stuff sounds like they are way further into this than you'd expect. I don't understand how this could work because I can't imagine because the thing about your eyes is that your eyes need to be able to view distance, right? Uh, and like you, you shift focus. Like mm -hmm. you actually, it's like, um, imagine looking through, uh, uh, a chain link fence, right? If you shift focus, you actually kind of don't notice that the fence is there anymore, right? Or like if you look through um, a screen door, right? You can fo you can shift your focus to look at the actual intricacies of the screen, um, and then you can shift your focus and be able to look past the screen and almost not see the screen anymore. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I can't imagine a heads-up display working the way that this seems to think that it can. By putting the image directly in front of your fucking eye, like literally so close that your eye is basically touching the image. You know what I mean? Um, I just, I don't see it happening, but I also feel like people with bad eyesight should be able to pick up a photo and be able to see it very clearly um, because surely it flattens the image for you, you know? It's no longer far away. But I guess the way your eyes work is when you look at something that has depth to it, you have to focus differently. I don't know. I don't know how it works. I'm not a master of the eyes. Uh, anyway, so Startup Mojo Vision has revealed that they are working on contact lenses that 
through the magic of augmented reality, will provide the wearer with information as seen in shows and video games set in a technologically advanced future. I thought this was appropriate to talk about right after the flying car. Um, regarded as the Mojo Lens, Vice President... God, that's a fucking horrible name. Regarded as the Mojo Lens, is it going to show me porn all day? <laughs> Vice, Can you imagine? That is absolutely what this will get used for. If you could just have porn underneath, like every time you close your eye, right, you could program it to play your uh, your porno or whatever. So your eyelids covering what it's going to show to everybody else. Calling it, that's going to be a thing in the future. Okay, so <laughs> regarding the Mojo Lens, Vice President of Product and Marketing, Stephen Sinclair, noted that everything in the lens had to be developed themselves. We've had to invent most of everything we put in the lens. As you can imagine, we've invented our own display. We're inventing our own oxygenation system. We're inventing our own power data. We've invented our own custom chips and power management tools. We're inventing our own algorithms for eye tracking. The prototype's micro LED display, positioned slightly off the surface of the eye at the center of the lens, contains 70,000 pixels in an area equivalent to nearly a grain of sand. That's the lens is also... That, that seems weird, doesn't it? Yeah. Like That's probably way more pixels than you need. No, no shit, really? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you put a grain of sand that close to your eye, it gets well, it gets bigger, right? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I mean, damn. I mean, maybe if you flattened the grain of sand to the display... <laughs> With I don't know, um, <laughs> so it, it contains seventy thousand pixels in an area equivalent to nearly a grain of sand. The lens is also a hard scleral lens, uh, which will have to be disinfected often and replaced every year. There are, there were no mentions of costs, but the, like anything, if this does come out, this will be expensive at first, like Google Glass, and then it'll turn into a novelty that people just throw away. I'm just kidding. Uh, it'll, it'll, the, if it's good, the price will lower over time. Mojo Vision is already working to embed other electronics onto the lens, such as image and motion sensors, radios, and batteries. Yeah, that's just what I fucking want. A battery on my eye. Definitely sounds like a good idea. No blindness concerns there. All you got to do is make it powered by um, heat or something. You know what I mean? Um which obviously is probably way harder than using a battery, but uh, mm -hmm. anyway, just imagine blinking and having that fucking battery rub on your inner eyelid every time. That sounds dude, fucking. Dude, I'm just, I'm just imagining like a double A battery strapped to your eyeball, <laughs> <laughs> like a watch battery stuck <laughs> on your eye. <laughs> uh, the device like, was present. Like how do you, how do you charge it? Do you stick a wire in your eye? <laughs> no, I'm sure you take it out. <laughs> but you, you want to just you hold charge, on, hold on, honey. On, my on, the, go, on the go my charging. Do do let me let me plug it in so I can continue having our FaceTime call. Right, you have to like plug in the charger into your eye so you can keep talking. <laughs> it's just like sticking the socket. <laughs> Doesn't it just seem like it'd be way easier um, to just? I I bet you anything, it would be easier to reproduce the human eye in a cyber form and have it interface with your brain than to fucking do all the shit they're trying to do with the stupid contact lens. You know what I mean? Like it's easier to go the cyber brain route of, of ghosts in the shell than to make it actually profitable in the consumer market. Probably is. The device was present, uh, I think it was presented at the Consumer Electronics Show where journalists were provided a demo of the lens. Attendees were not allowed to put them in. Uh, where the display <laughs> scrolled through preloaded information, such as the weather or and a smartphone text. That's just what I fucking want. I want to not be able to escape my stupid cell phone notifications. That's exactly what I need in my life for my anxiety to go down. <laughs> Uh, imagine me on the podcast. Oh, I got canceled off work tomorrow. Good thing I'm not going in now. <laughs> That's probably the only time it would have actually helped me. Or or like all of the messages from Facebook popping up like my internet shit. I can't join. Oh, you guys are so delayed. <laughs> Just constantly while I'm trying to do this. What I'm the trying fuck to read what an article here. Stop popping up these windows. <laughs> okay. Um through the I, I was edge only like yeah, go ahead. playing Pokemon Go. Like, have you seen the trailer for um, Free Guy? 
for what? For Free Guy. It's a Ryan Reynolds movie coming out this summer. Have you seen the trailer? Oh, that's the one. That's the one that's like inside of a Santa or uh, Grand Theft Auto style game. Yeah, he he puts on the yeah. glasses and he sees all the overlays and stuff. Yeah, that would make sense. Just have it be like glasses instead of just. Oh, a, sure. No, there's I, there's, I there's some... like Google glasses, but I mean that just yeah. makes sense more than a contact lens. Yeah, so I think the the thing that would make the most sense would be a heads up display in your car windshield that would position traffic and all that for you, the driver, to see, like turn left here, you know, and have it like yeah. show it on the street or whatever, you know, like um, yeah, like, like, like the shit that they have, have on you, have when you, you watch seen... sports, like uh, hey, soccer or football or whatever, and they have like the they have like the grid. Overlays are like in the Olympics when they're doing the swimming and stuff. They have like a pattern that the camera shows you that actually looks as though it's being projected onto the ground, but it isn't. It's actually an after image thing or whatever. Like that's the kind of shit that would be great to have. And I think that doing that in a car would make a lot of sense. It would be really cool to be able to um, to have like a GPS where you didn't have to look down. You know what I mean? But, you could yeah. just look forward and know exactly where you're supposed to go. Because how many times have you um, been driving and your GPS tells you turn right in 300 feet and then you make a right and you realize, oh, no, they meant the next right. Because who fucking knows how far 300 feet is off the top of their head? You know what I mean? I'm only going 15 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Funny thing you say that. Have, um, you haven't seen Space Brothers, have you? Not yet. Yeah. They, there's a thing where they're on where the one of the brothers is on the moon and in the rover it was like, Hey, I let's put a windshield in the rover so we can actually do exactly what you're talking about. How the GPS be displayed in the windshield uh -huh. because of like how shadows work on the moon. It's hard to see, Oh, am I going to drive off a cliff or, or just so can I still go, keep going? I kind of think like, Oh no, you're going to drive off a cliff. So yeah. it's like, that's exactly what they did in that, in that show. So something mm -hmm. very bizarre just happened. My left AirPod, because I've had the right one out for a while just to let it charge so that this wouldn't be an issue. My left AirPod just did the doo 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 doo. So I put the right one in, and rather than hear you through both of them, I heard you twice. Mm. Like one of them is delayed. <laughs> anyway, that was a really weird experience. I, I do hear you. It's just when I had them both in, I was hearing you like you were coming from two different rooms. Anyway, all right. So, uh, uh, through the use of edge detection, the device can out uh, the the device then outlined things like traffic lights and people in particularly dimmed room. I mean, that'd be nice to walk into a room and have your sex doll notice you. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> turn, uh, turn its head towards you. <laughs> this is like the other end of it. Now you can walk into a room and immediately identify your sex doll <laughs> in the crowded room. <laughs> Because, you know, they're indistinguishable from humans in 2020 yeah. or whatever, or 2025. <laughs> All right, anyway. Yeah. Uh -huh. Another demo of the operating system focused on future functions that could be uh, that could be coming, like eye tracking to allow navigation through menus by staring at an arrow icon that would make information larger. Mojo Vision, who has raised over $100 million for the device, still have a lot of work to do before the product meets their expectations, with the finished version being at least years away. Mojo Vision says they intend to get the device to those who need it first, such as people with incredibly poor vision. The lenses are able to utilize edge detection to highlight things and can use a zoom function to also enlarge objects. After that, Mojo might then focus on professions where hands-free information is vital, such as firefighters attempting to rescue people in a burning building. Anyway, I thought that was an interesting thing, and it will be interesting to see where that goes. Okay, so we are going to save this article for a future podcast with Augie. I'll put that in the for Augie bin. Um, but we aren't going to wait to talk about mayonnaise, man. <laughs> or the deaf man suing Pornhub. Oh. Some of these other ones, I don't even know if we'll be able to read. Uh, well, I mean, I we can. I just have to do it a different way. Okay. So I don't think there's any tweets in this one, so we're good. Okay. So we've, uh, we, I've been waiting on this article. Oh, hold on, I can't see what's on screen yet because I got the other thing up. Okay, uh, I've been waiting on this article for a, a long time. I, I was going to skip it. It's not that good, but we talked about it in the last podcast. It's something we should just finally get, get up and do. So let's talk about Mayonnaise Man. 
who is believed to have returned to his uniform rooting ways in Hokkaido. So, however, he appears to have traded in his weapon for a lower calorie alternative. Yeah, he's using uh, salad dressing now. On the morning of October 11th in Ibetsu City, Hokkaido Prefecture, a young woman on her way to high school and dressed in a uniform was approached by a 39-year-old man. The man then suddenly spit salad dressing onto the girl's outfit, soiling it. The victim reported her assault to the police, who were able to eventually track down and arrest the suspect, partly thanks to the DNA evidence present on the, in the spatter of the dressing. Uh, the man is said to have admitted to the crime, coldly telling them, I thought I would find a high school girl and dirty her uniform before going into work. I love this line here. It's hard to squeeze a felony assault into a busy work day. <laughs> <laughs> Although this has not been confirmed, the suspect in custody shares the name Tsuyoshi Furusawa with that of the notorious Mayonnaise Man, a then 32-year-old Sapporo man who terrorized schoolgirls by splattering them with mayo in 12 different reported incidents in 2012. Considering both incidents happened in neighboring Hokkaido cities, both perps have the same name and age, and gave the same motive of simply wanting to make uniforms dirty, it seems an, it seems an awful lot like Mayonnaise Man has returned to his wicked ways, just with dressing this time. Netizens were quick to assume the same, and feel that rehabilitation is no longer an option for this fiend. Two strikes are enough for this guy. Throw the book at him. That's disgusting. Uh, since this is his second offense, the courts will probably go harder on him. I wonder if he'll switch to salt next time. <laughs> Can you imagine just going up to someone and just you know, spraying salt all over them? <laughs> um, going from mayonnaise man to dressing man seems like a step down. Sure, you can clean it, but I never want to wear that uniform again. Is there a deserted island where we can just drop this guy off? Uh, so he did it like the great Kabuki, uh, which is a pro wrestler. I think it's time we start using those GPS bands like they have in other countries for these people, like a ankle <laughs> monitor or whatever. Um, in the highly likely event that dressing man is in fact mayonnaise man, this does raise the question of how to deal with such a person. Locking up a guy for years for spitting sauce seems excessive, despite how utterly nasty it is. On the other hand, he clearly can't control himself and needs some sort of leash until therapist man can, can crack that nut. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's, a difficult situation, it's a difficult situation that the Hokkaido authorities have, uh, will have to deal with. In the meantime, we'd like to remind you that this is a different guy from the one we reported on in 2014 who also put mayonnaise on a girl's uniform in Hyogo Prefecture. And now I feel really sad because no society should have to deal with multiple mayonnaise men. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. This seems like an appropriate thing to talk about, but not right now. Soon, though. Soon. We'll talk about this here, if we talk about it at all. Okay, so Reese, you shared this. Singer voice actor Naoi Yuki slaps her fans as raffle prize. Do you have anything particular to say about this? Uh, it's funny. It is That's funny. So funny that I'm going to read this version of it, because it's <laughs> Okay. So hundreds of otaku line up to get spanked by anime voice actress at Tokyo event. Star of Puella Magi Madoka Magica and Simpho Gear gives a very special hello to her fans' butts. Top anime voice performers do more than just portray their characters. For example, Aoi Yuki, the voice of Puella Magi Madoka Magica's titular Madoka Kaname, and Simpho Gear pr protagonist Hibiki Tachibana, also sings anime theme songs and appears at meet and greet fan events, all in the name of building buzz for her projects and <laughs> their fan communities. Those two supplementary activities converged last Wednesday in Tokyo's Ikebukuro neighborhood, where Yuki held a mini concert to commemorate the single CD release of Unbreakable, the opening theme to currently airing TV series Infinite Dendrogram, which went on sale that day. And this is just a link where you can watch it, uh, the song in the actual anime. Um, as a special thank you to her most loyal fans, anime singers, 
sorry, as a special thank you to their most loyal fans, anime singers, like their idol singer counterparts, will often have handshake sessions at the end of their events, pressing palms while expressing their gratitude on an individual on an individual face-to-face basis. However, after giving a live performance of Unbreakable and its B-side breakdown at the Central Fountain Plaza of the Sunshine City Shopping Center, the 27-year-old Yuki used her hands for a very different purpose, administering spankings to her fans. Shit, I should have pulled this up already. Here's our embedded tweet that we can't look at. So these are the fans. Oh, shit. Well, yeah. So this is why we're using this article, because it's much better images than uh, than the uh, Anime News Network one. So all of these guys showed up <laughs> to see this girl, and she just <laughs> hauls off on them with, with this fan. <laughs> you didn't rush into the crowds and start indiscriminately slapping butts, though. Instead, the backside whackings were given to willing fans who asked for them and delivered via a harisen, a type of large folded paper fan used by Japanese comedians and designed to produce a son- and and designed to produce sonorous sound a, and designed to produce a sonorous sound when it bashes booties. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too much alliteration in that sentence for me to get that correct right on the first try. Still, Come and get spanked by your favorite anime voice actress is a pretty out there invitation, even by hardcore otaku standards. So how many people would actually take so how many people would actually take Yuki up on her offer? According to the voice actor herself via her Twitter account, 200. Link. Oh, okay. So this is the same image and then this is the one they linked previously. <laughs> Japan has the best reaction images. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I love it. Okay. All right. Let me close that and that. Okay. As shown in the photo, a huge line of ardent fans and, un- <laughs> and unprotected butts snake around the <laughs> plaza <laughs> with Aoki employing an especially fierce looking two handed grip. In the recipient's defense, this unique promotion wasn't based entirely on masochism. Sorry, it wasn't based entirely in masochism, as the official video for Unbreakable features Yuki in the same costume she wore at the Ikabukuro event, smashing up a computer room using a crowbar, using a crowbar, baseball bat, and other instruments of destruction, thus making the spanking session only like 75% based in masochism, 85% tops. <laughs> The Unbreakable music video starts with a warning that it, quote, includes violent expressions and vandalism scenes and asks viewers to please be careful when watching. Yuki echoed these sentiments, telling fans that in their actual lives, they should treat even inanimate objects with gentle respect and that they should watch the video as a form of cathartic release without emulating her on-screen actions, even if they wanted their own rear ends to be on the receiving end of her rampage. Okay, so um, I hadn't previously read this. I thought it was going to cover something that the other article actually covered a little bit better. So she called it the, quote, hitting session, right? She offered three levels of hitting strength to her lucky fans, weak, medium, and strong. The hitting session is related to the lyrics of Unbreakable, which are all about striking and destroying. Yuki joked that if she were going to get hit by her favorite performer, she to take a strong hit and quipped, you guys all want the strong hit, right? <laughs> her play acting as a sadistic character repeatedly made the audience crack up in laughter. Oh, sorry, reportedly. Reportedly made the audience crack up in laughter. Anyway. Yeah, so she asked them if they wanted the strong hit and then she hauls off on them with this fucking pose. I mean, she gave it to him. <laughs> anyway, that's <laughs> that. All right. Deaf man sues Pornhub for discrimination over lack of subtitles. Now, this sounds like, um, what do you call that? A uh, Like a lawsuit troll, <laughs> it seems like to me. But uh, a deaf man is taking Pornhub to court, claiming that the lack of subtitles in, sorry, claiming that the lack of subtitles in its videos violates the Americans with Disabilities Act. Yaroslav Suris, 
is arguing that the absence of closed captioning on the site's videos is tantamount to denying access to deaf and hearing impaired customers. Suri's claims that... <laughs> Suri's claims that he was unable to enjoy such videos as Hot Step Aunt Babysits Disobedient Nephew, Sexy Cop Gets Witnesses to Talk, Your Sexy Cop Gets Witness to Talk, and Daddy 4K, Allison Comes to Talk About Money to Her Boy's Naughty Father, <laughs> his inability to understand the, no doubt, riveting dialogue. Lichonsky <laughs> says... Uh, just imagine if Vic offered a hitting session. Sheesh. <laughs> oh. uh, and then he goes on to say, there are tons of sites without subs on their videos. What a joke. Uh, like YouTube? Oh. Right, right. Well, YouTube has like the automated thing that you can do. But yeah, obviously this is like a troll thing. He's trying He's trying to do... Uh, he's trying to see if anything sticks. It's a class action lawsuit, right? So he's trying, he's trying to see if anything sticks so that he can troll them into giving him money or whatever. But... Um, the litigant, uh, the litigant says that he and many others in the deaf community would like to purchase premium subscriptions, but that it would be pointless because he cannot understand the plots of the videos without subtitles. As mm -hmm. of the time of writing, Suris has not disclosed the amount of money he is claiming in damages. Pornhub has responded to the lawsuit by saying that the site does have a closed caption category. So, um, so here's the thing. This is either a uh, lawsuit troll or this is his way of attempting to force the conversation so that Pornhub actually does put subtitles for the rest of their content. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so um, we have another article here on it. There were many. Um, I have kept it to a minimum for you guys. So this guy's from Brooklyn, even though he sounds like he's straight out of Siberia. <laughs> So here's some of the other titles. Body equal in standing, I guess. <laughs> so here's some of the other titles here that uh, that they chose. So Fox News also covered this, and they put up the two tamest titles ever. Um, New York Post put up a couple more that we didn't get to uh, see already. So some of these are going to be um, the full titles or stuff we already read, right? But Hot Step Aunt Babysits Disobedient Nephew, Sophie Ryan Family Therapy, Sexy cop gets witness to talk. A, and I don't know if they're blanking this out or what. A lesbian action and dirty talk. An 18 year old blonde stripper Samantha double penetration in homemade gangbang porn. <laughs> but their lack of closed captioning stripped him from his enjoyment, he claims in the lawsuit. Or the lawsuit claims. But again, even the New York Post can't, can't uh, put the correct, you know. They can't proofread. Um, the websites are, quote, places of public accommodation, which deny equal access to their video content, which is available to hearing individuals and violates. Sorry. The websites are, quote, places of public accommodation, which deny equal access to their video content, which is available to hearing individuals and violates the ADA, according to the lawsuit. So he's claiming that because uh, the because the audio portion is hearable by non-deaf people, but isn't interpretable by deaf people, that it's discrimination, right? So what about the uh, blind folk? Right? Just do, wait till they see can, can we have a, the auto, audio descriptive service <laughs> for porn? Yeah, that'd be like a narrator. Can you just imagine that? Just a fucking narrator. Like... Like the pizza guy walked up to the porch. He rang the doorbell. Ding ding. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, to make matters worse, Suri said that he pays for a premium subscription on Pornhub, which hosts millions of adult videos. So I'm sharing this. This is partially why I'm sharing this. I don't know why New York Post seems to think that he has one. Sankaku Complex and Fox News didn't think that he had one. They said that he specifically doesn't have one because why would he? Right. Um, anyway, the ADA prohibits discrimination against people with disabilities in areas of in areas of employment, transportation, public accommodations, communication, and access to state and local government programs and services, according to the U.S. Department of Labor. So he's claiming that it's a public accommodation. This is kind of scary. So 
Is Pornhub located in uh, California? Is MindGeek the uh, one? Not- also, I'm just I'm just noting that Boy Meets World star says porn pays better than Disney. <sighs> Apparently, yeah, more on porn. <laughs> The cam girl dream leaves many women broke and disillusioned. Pornhub is Canadian. Oh, really? Headquarters in Montreal. Is linked to former educational site that now has porn. That's hilarious. Boy, can you imagine? All right. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's it for that. Do you have anything you want to say about this deaf guy? The balls uh, on this guy, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be hilarious if they if they recorded the proceedings of the lawsuit and put it on Pornhub with title "Deaf Man Rapes Porn Company" <laughs> <laughs> for all their worth. <laughs> okay, Tokyo man arrested for abandoning father's remains in a subway station's men's room. Arrested. Arrested. <laughs> That probably wasn't mentioned in the will, (laughs) says Sora News 24. In September of 2019, the father of Hiroaki Hishijima passed away. However, his father having been divorced from his mother and living separately from the family, there appeared to have been there appeared to have been little in the way of a funeral. Instead, the Tokyo municipal government was handling the cremation, and it wasn't until the following month that they requested. (laughs) Hashijima picked up the ash. The Hashijima pick up the ashes for a prop. Uh, sorry, the Hashijima pick up the ashes for a proper committal. Uh, he dutifully went to the ward office to pick up his father, but then was at a loss over what to do with him. Reports are conflicting over whether Hashijima's over whether Hashijima's mother directly refused to allow him to bring the ashes home, or he simply thought that she would get mad if he did. Either way. Hold on one second. Go babe. Goodbye, babe. You gonna be okay? Go babe. Go babe. Go babe. Go babe. You got it. (laughs) Um, Be careful, Art. I uh, gave everybody ice cream. Oh, why would you do that? Because they were hungry and we were out of gummies and there was lots of crying. Okay. Well, I'm I'm also gonna bubble them in, so I thought it would be okay. Okay. Before you go, could you grab me a, a cinnamon mint from the car? <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. So what's the thing? Um, oh, okay. Don't worry about it then. That's all right. Sorry. You give me that water though, if you want to. Oh, no, that's all right. Give me a water if you don't mind. Sorry, my wife is. Uh, we watch um, a church friend's daughter because uh, she's a teacher. And my wife has taken her back to uh, think of it back home. Anyway, I was supposed to finish before she had to leave, but uh, that ain't happening. <clears throat> we have to know what's going on with these ashes. So reports are conflicting over whether he, uh, Hishijima's mother directly refused to allow him to bring the ashes home, or he simply thought that she would get mad if he did. Either way, he felt that going home wasn't an option. And as he later told police, committing the remains... Committing the remains would have been too much of a costly and time-consuming process for him. What is committing? I, I guess like committing them to like a vase or something. You know, like a, a, a burying them in a in a, grave, in a cemetery. I guess. So while uh, so while passing through Tokyo Station, he thought a men's room of the Tokyo Metro Marunouchi line was as good a spot as any, and just left his father there. May he rest in peace. <laughs> Station staff disagreed, however, and upon finding the urn filled with ashes, contacted the police. Okay, so it already was in an urn. Uh, contacted the police, who eventually tracked down the 53-year-old son and arrested him for abandonment of human remains, which can result in up to three years in prison. Fuck. Jesus. Details regarding why the father was handled this way uh, details regarding why the father was handled this way aren't clear, leaving many online wondering how something like this could happen. That mother sounds kind of scary. He was worried about upsetting his mother, but he wasn't worried about upsetting the rest of the city and the police. 
Abandonment of human remains? I never even heard of that crime. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't sound like something that comes up in every day. <laughs> Um, so I just noticing this one about Attack on Titan's final series ending scene revealed by the franchise creator. Uh, anyway, so um, sounds like he was trying to be a good son by picking up the remains, but he was too scared of the mother. At least they were able to recover it. He could have uh, he could have just tossed it into Tokyo Bay. Is he is he scared of his mom? He's fifty three. Why can't uh, we can't say what? his thinking was uh, uh, without knowing the whole situation, but technically he did commit a crime. Okay, so most people were quick to judge the mother, which is surprising to me as my first thought was the father might have been the piece of work. The fact that the son couldn't be bothered to process the remains properly would suggest as much. However, another, f another telling detail is that Hishijima had simply left the urn in the restroom and held back on using one of the many nearby toilets that could have easily disposed of all the evidence without a trace. He could have thoroughly rinsed the container with the toilet's many functions. It would have been the perfect crime. <laughs> <laughs> so they've got the one for your butt, the other one for your butt, and the one for your dead dad's ashes. <laughs> 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 That's perhaps fair. in this case, perhaps in this case, both the mother and the father had their issues, and the son who was stuck in the middle uh, and probably not raised in the best environment wrongfully felt the best compromise was to leave his old man in a historic piece of the Tokyo landscape. Uh, as far as public restrooms go, it's probably one of the better ones to spend eternity in. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Male university student arrested for reaching into schoolgirl skirts. So these are all going to be short. Uh, a fourth-year university student was arrested upon was arrested on suspicion of indecent assault after allegedly putting his hand inside the skirt of a high school girl while riding on a train, an act that will no doubt ruin his college career. The 22-year-old male, uh, sorry, the 22-year-old male student was attending the University of Tokyo and was accused of inserting his hand into the skirt of an 18-year-old schoolgirl and feeling her pantsu. He, ha uh, he half admitted to his crime, saying that he was, quote, looking for a partner to molest. Uh, <laughs> put that in your one ad. But also denied part of the allegations, explaining that he touched her above her ponsu. According to police, the girl raised her voice during the incident, alerting attention to a nearby 47-year-old male company employee who was standing face to face with her. He saw the university student loosen his grip from inside the skirt. The suspect fled after getting off the train at No Burrito Station. No Burritos? In Kawasaki City. <laughs> but the male company employees <laughs> sought the aid of the other passengers, leading to a nearby local government official to catch the suspect and bring him to the police. Keio University staff recorded 1,000 videos of women in the restroom. So I don't care how much of a fetish you have for this. That has to get old. Yeah. A staff member of Tokyo's Keio University was arrested after it was found that he recorded thousands of videos using a secret camera in the women's restroom, an achievement that could be the greatest of the, <laughs> could be the greatest of his time. The 49-year-old is a former section manager and secretary in charge of the principal's office, according to police. Two years ago... Sorry, hold on. Okay. The 49-year-old was the former... The 49-year-old was the former... Ma uh, fuck. The 49-year-old was the former section manager and secretary in... in why is this so hard? <laughs> the 49-year-old was the former section manager and secretary in charge of the principal's office, according to police... Uh, two years ago in December, the man was suspected of violating the anti-nuisance <laughs> anti ordinance when he intruded into a woman's restroom in Tokyo's Mita campus in Minato Ward, installing a small camera so he could spy on the woman. Right. Anti-nuisance ordinance. That's... Do we not have, like, an actual... Like, is that not... An, I guess that's not actually a crime, right? Mm -hmm. Going into... Especially not in America anymore. All you gotta do is identify as a woman to go into the bathroom. But, um... It just seems like conspiracy to commit 
perverse. Act. I don't know. Like this seems like there should be more to it than anti nuisance. Mm. Such a nuisance to have somebody record me taking a shit. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> women using the restrooms last March had notified the police after she found a small hidden, sorry, a woman using the restroom last March had notified the police after she found a small hidden camera. When the authorities examined the camera, they discovered that it captured footage of the 49 year old suspect. Oh, undone by his own camera. That's good. No less than 1000 videos were confiscated from his personal computer at home all of which were voyeuristic videos taken from inside the toilet. The criminal has since admitted to his crimes. The university provided the following statement. It is truly deplorable if this is true. In the future, the university will confirm all facts and strictly deal with them. Which is to say, uh, yeah, don't worry, guys. We'll do, we'll do it. <laughs> we'll deal with it. We didn't know about this, but we'll totally deal with it. Um, yeah, no, but seriously, like, if you've got this fetish, I can imagine, like, all sorts of perhaps like porn or hentai scenarios that could play out, but to get every shot from the same exact angle inside the toilet, I can't imagine that he's got he's gotten his jollies off to each of those thousand videos. Well, well, the thing is, all all that this probably isn't all of them. He probably deleted all the whales that came in. <laughs> You know, Ooh. let's uh, let's skip this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a dangerous fetish to have if you're only into pee, too. <laughs> you know, once that sh once they start start dropping that deuce, you're like, wow, oh, I'm boner killer. <laughs> <laughs> Ten year old boy impregnates teenage girl. I love how Sankaku Complex just always has an image. For exactly what the headline is. <laughs> Russian media is reporting that a 13-year-old girl in southern Siberia has been impregnated by a 10-year-old. The two children, who live in the closed town of... Dear God. Zelensnogorsk. Fuck. It's crime enough to live in a place named that. <laughs> Have claimed that they were in a, quote, civil partnership. And that they wish to keep the child. Although social services are investigating due to fears of uh, due to fears about who will look after the little law. Although social services are investigating due to fears about who will look after the baby if it is born, especially due to the girl's mother having terminal cancer. I love how they just say if it is born, right? Like, yeah, we're going to terminate it rather than put it up for adoption. Like when social services does something about it, right? A Russian pediatrician named Nikolai uh, Skarobogatov. Um, has said that it is theoretically possible for the 10-year-old to have fathered the child, although he thinks the chances are 50-50. News agency KRSK has suggested that the girl may have had multiple partners. Fuck. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you are uh. not the father, 10-year-old Timmy, <laughs> Timmy Gorski or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> The alleged father is a fourth grader at a local school in the closed town, which is home to, I love this, I love oh this, God. which is home to a <laughs> nuclear waste storage facility and which did not appear on maps until 1992 due to the Soviet Union's policy of keeping the existence of towns with sensitive industries a secret. Even today, visitors still need to pass a checkpoint before entering. The following photograph of the couple has been released to the media. Reese, are you the 10 year old boy that fathered this child? <laughs> I mean, that's one hell of a forehead, I gotta tell you. <laughs> I think his hat's just on really far back, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean they, they say it's theoretically plausible for a 10 year old. But could all this nuclear radiation have caused the <laughs> change? And then so the, made it the thing is, for him well, to do yeah, it when he was like six? Storage. Well, see, here's the thing, though. Um, this is important for everybody to know. Uh, I mean, I know that nobody in my audience is the age that this is going to matter. Girls can get pregnant before their first period. Yeah. Right? So some girls think that because they haven't started their period and they understand logically how the pregnancy works that they can't get pregnant if they haven't started their period. But the thing is that 
if you are going through your first ovulation, right before your first period, you get pregnant, right? So, so becoming sexually active at this ridiculously young age, uh, thinking that you can't get pregnant is not, uh, it's just a bad all the way around way to go about it. Um, so, and also, I mean, these kids shouldn't be paying in any way, obviously, but, uh, the, the question about what to do with the, with the child, uh, that's where it gets tricky. And will he have a messed up mosaic face like these two adult parents did or two parents did? <laughs> All right. That was a bad joke. I'm going to move on. Okay. So a 70, okay. So I'm, I'm interjecting another article here that feels appropriate. 71 year old arrested for throwing filled condoms into a yard. I want to know how, how accurately combined these are or like how, how much they mirror each other. I mean, a perverted old man was apprehended by police after throwing condoms filled with his own bodily fluids into a neighboring house's yard, which he claimed he did to quote, satisfy his urges. I just fucking love how, how every time a Japanese guy gets caught doing something perverted, it's like, yeah, man, I had to satisfy my urges. You know, instead of like, I just didn't want to go to the trash can, so I tossed my jerk off condom into the neighbor's yard. Just out the, just out the window. Like, yeah, just dude, out the you window. know what? No, you don't understand. I got hard after ejaculating into the condom. <laughs> I'm throwing it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> that was round two, which was the better round, I gotta tell you. That's why. That's why. <laughs> That's why he's thrown. Did they say it was two? That'd be hilarious. They threw more than one. That'd be so fucking funny. It's like he just keeps like all day. Like I got off so much on this, I just got to keep going and keep throwing. You know? and just keep. Just, I go through a pack a day. I've got a problem. <laughs> bumper stickers just keep going and throwing every day. <laughs> the seventy-one-year-old senile criminal tossed. Yeah, this is two years. Guys, it's continuing. It's fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's round two, like you said. <laughs> so the 71-year-old senile criminal tossed two used contraceptives <laughs> containing his bodily fluids into the yard of a nearby house last October with surveillance cameras capturing him in the act. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I opened this. I wanted to know if that surveillance footage was posted. <laughs> I just want to see this guy tossing the... I don't, I don't think it was. I couldn't find it uh, if it were. Um, admitting to his twisted deed, the man exclaimed... No, I don't, I don't understand this explanation. Maybe... Yeah, I don't get this. Uh, okay, he says, admitting to his twisted deed, the man explained that, quote, I wanted to sate my sexual desire by imagining that my wives would pick them up and throw them away. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're what? <laughs> First of all, you're throwing these into a neighboring house's yard. Why do you think you have multiple wives? And why would they be picking them up unless your wife lives in the next door house? Well, it, it does say he's senile. Yeah, this is just such a weird, a weird statement. The surrounding area had actually been afflicted with a string of about 10 or so similar cases a few years back. Police were investigating if the suspect may be connected with those incidents. <laughs> Probably is. I mean, it's either him. This is man or this other guy I'm about cousin. to read about. This is man and his cousin. They had this. They had their, their their string of crimes a couple of years ago, and they're, now they're back to go again. You were too sweet. I think you're good. It's cold. I know it's been out in the. I don't know what to tell you. So, uh, we've also got this article that I just found from back in 2016. Maybe they will talk about those 10 year old, 10 year old incidents as well, but Japanese man arrested for putting semen filled condoms in schoolgirls' bags for several years. <laughs> Lishansky says, there are tons of sites without substance. I don't know. Sorry. I got that. Hold on. Shansky no. says, no wonder the birth rate is down in Japan. Everyone just masturbates. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> they don't they don't have that uh good Christian value that states spilling your seed in the street is a uh, a sin against God. <laughs> <laughs> 
and especially spilling it into your neighbor's yard. <laughs> All right. Uh, the man is being charged with property damage after the contents leaked into one girl's bag. I fucking love this. Anti-nuisance ordinance? Yeah, so the condom in my bag, that wasn't a processable crime. But because it ruptured and spilled his jizz all over my stuff, now it's against the anti-nuisance ordinance and property damage, right? Like, these just seem like no-brainer common law things that should already be on the books. But apparently, there's all these, like, really minute details that need to be met to process these crimes because they're just too icky to, to take. Let's just imagine the guy in the courtroom, you know, having to explain all that shit, you know? Wait a minute. Whoa, IRL Onani Master Kurosawa? What is this? O Onan? What are you guys talking about? <laughs> anyway. A 58-year-old... Sorry, I got a... I have a very spicy cinnamon mint in my mouth that my wife just handed me. Sorry. A 58-year-old cleaning company employee was arrested by Tokyo Metropolitan Police yesterday after a condom containing his semen was discovered in the bag of a female high school student. This is a ballsy crime, knowing that your DNA is in it. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, it, it obviously takes balls because, I mean, <laughs> the, the mechanics of the crime. <laughs> <laughs> the offender from Ibaraki Prefecture is being held in custody for the destruction of property after the fluid. I love how they just refer the fluid. <laughs> the fluid leaked into the girl's bag, soiling its contents. The incident, uh, the incident which occurred on the morning of the 17th of May inside Tokyo Metro's Kokaigi Jidomai. <laughs> fucking hell. You gotta choose the most ridiculous. I'm sorry. What the fuck? Okay, so I asked about Onan Master Kurosawa. E. Castro says, LOL. You all should definitely read that if you haven't. Onani Master Kurosawa, where the main guy jizzes in his classmates' bags is revenge. Great series, by the way. I have never <laughs> heard of this. Please link me to where I may purchase this fine reading uh, material. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look it up on my anime list to see if there's an English title. Anani Massacre Sawa. It's not Jizz Master Kurosawa. It doesn't, it doesn't need to exist. Masturbation Master Kurosawa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll back off. That's an acceptable title. Okay. <laughs> Is that really what it is? Did you just come up with it? No, just a synonym. Masturbation, masturbation. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say. Yeah, I was just. I wasn't sure if you were. Four, four were volumes. In, four volumes published in two thousand seven to two thousand eight. Doesn't look like we have an English release. Unsurprisingly, it says it's an indie comic, so you can't really buy it anywhere. Only yeah. read it online. Well, then I'll have to take. <laughs> I'll have to take the uh, the hit to the collection for that one. All right. <laughs> So the offender from Ibaraki Prefecture is being held in custody for destruction of property after fluid leaked in the girl's bag, soiling its contents. The incident, which occurred on the morning of the 17th of May inside Tokyo Metro's Kokaigi Jidame, yeah, I'm going to say that was correctly pronounced, subway station. Uh, the God, how, why? It's just a bunch. It's like, this literally looks like how FDM came up with his name. Just, you know what I mean? Like you just yeah. randomly type shit. Kokaiki Jidome Don Domae subway station went unnoticed. Okay, we're gonna do it this way. The incident, which occurred on the morning of the 17th of May inside of one of Tokyo's subway stations, went unnoticed until the until the student found the item inside her bag after arriving at school. The student told her father, who then reported it to police. According to authorities, the Kojimachi police station who made the arrest. I'm sorry, according to the authorities at the Koji. Fuck. According to authorities at Kujimachi Police Station who made the arrest, the 17th of May incident was not an isolated case, with successive complaints from similar schoolgirl victims having been received. 
Following a DNA analysis of the fluid, it was confirmed that the condoms belonged to the same offender who said he started placing condoms in girls' bags two to three years ago due to work stress. Man, I love Japan. You can do the most profane things, and your excuse is, yeah, work got to me. It was because of work. Man, you know how it is. You know, my ninja over here. You know how it is, my ninja. Work is so stressful here. We we just have to bust the nut in a girl's bag. <laughs> you know? All right. So we got one last article here. Pedophile who identifies as eight-year-old girl claims child porn is a constitutional right. <laughs> okay. So I have to say, I agree with this guy in what he meant because he is talking about drawings. The problem with your argument, eight-year-old girl Joseph Gobrick, is that there was actual child porn found on your computer as well. <laughs> so, he said this in court, I would no sooner have sex with a child than you would a rattlesnake. It's just not safe, the eight-year-old girl said. Another absurd case has emerged regarding a man in possession of computer animated pornography being arrested, who claimed that he believes the content is protected under the First Amendment. However, it was also said he was in possession of actual child pornography. 45-year-old Joseph Gobrick was arrested for the child pornography found on his home found on his home computer. However, he denied the images were of real children and were instead computer animated, causing them to be protected under the First Amendment. The strange man also stated that he identifies as an eight-year-old girl. Police <laughs> discovered more than 50 images in Gobrick's possession, some of which were actual victims known to police. That's where they get you, man. Uh, <laughs> it was also said that he had a minor runaway in his house. <laughs> the judge said that the case was not merely concerning virtual content and that real people were being harmed as well. And then they've got a video here covering the event. Goburn will be in prison for at least a decade. So if you actually watch this, I have to say I'm very pleased with the judge who seems to actually understand and make a distinction between the actual victims and the drawings. And the this guy's representing himself. And literally in the fucking courtroom, one of the other attorneys describes the fact that while they're in trial, he's sitting there sketching lolly porn and passing it around. <laughs> Ponies, right? <laughs> the balls on these perverts, man. It's a bold strategy representing yourself in a crime like this to make this sort of claim. Mm. All right, so that is it for. He, he knows he's going in. He may as well make a statement. Yeah, that's it for the uh, stuff here. I'm gonna grab uh, Amon Saga from the other room. Yeah. Now, unfortunately... I'm pretty sure I watched this right after the last podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cinnamon. Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> I bit the thing in half and it went straight into uh, my esophagus. <laughs> mm. Oh. So, um, I don't remember most of the characters' names except for Amon. Uh, uh. My wife called the bad guy Thanatos. I, I didn't watch this, so... Oh, well, fucking great. <laughs> Should we uh, save I'm, for so, the next I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I was, I, you know, I was hoping FGN would be in here to talk yeah, to me you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too, with his bootleg copy. Um, all right, so uh, here's the thing. It actually wouldn't be a bad idea to... Um, to postpone this watch club and just cover it with the next watch club because for the next watch club, we're going to do something similar, although I think better, uh, the weathering continent. <laughs> One of the few DVD covers that goes this way. Um, 
Augie says, in high school, there was a girl named Cinnamon Sage. Well, I am so sorry for your inner city high school you went to. It's <laughs> not good. Oh. Or I'm sorry I'm sorry for this girl at a prestigious high school whose parents thought that was a good idea. All right. So um, I... Um, I will. Sh should I share my tweets, or should we just do this on the next podcast as the Watch Club, combining these two? That's up to you. Audience, did you watch either? <laughs> did you watch Almond Saga? <laughs> since I went to the trouble of actually making, let's do the tweets. Since there, that way we can separate the next one. Is there's almost nothing to say about this. Um, it's funny. I I'll give you the whole Watch Club right now. It's funny how it's one of those OVAs that that somebody looks at the OVAs coming out at the time and say, I could do that, you know, and they make something. That's what it's like, right? Um, where it kind of misses the key details that make a story engaging. Um, and what's really funny about it is that Amon, in fact, on the fucking cover, he has the sword on his back. Every time he fights, he's not using his own sword. So constantly while you're watching this, you'll see him stab someone and then run away. And then, and then you're like, you left your sword behind. Oh, no, wait, it's still there. Like, I don't know when he grabbed it, right? Or like, oh, I'm going to fight the, the final bad guy. Oh, shit, he slashed at my sword and it broke it in half. Oh, but it's okay because it wasn't my real sword, you know? Oh. <laughs> Stuff like that just keeps happening. So let me uh, let me just go ahead and add a couple more tweets to the. Uh, I, I got some extra tweets from uh, who was it? Blaze V. I'm gonna add him to the Twitter moment, and then I'm gonna go to the Twitter moment. <laughs> All right, let me edit it, and I'll just push this tweet up to where it should be. All right. Uh, yeah, that's good. That'll, I'll do, that'll work. Okay. All right, so let me show you guys my thoughts on this. Since I went to all the trouble of doing this, so. <coughs> First of all, Guess where I found this image? The yeah. internet. <laughs> yeah, but guess guess where I found it? I found oh, it where? on a wiki on a wikia for Final Fantasy four, six, six. I think it was Final Fantasy six. Um, mm -hmm. Cecil, what's his name? Cecil Raleigh. What was his name? The 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 lead character who's like a paladin in that. Yeah, Cecil. Yeah, Cecil. Anyway, they thought this was Cecil uh, on there. But this is actually the cover of the uh, Amon Saga manga. The character just happens to be drawn by Yoshitaka Amano, the Final mm -hmm. Fantasy character designer. And he kind of looks a little bit like that other guy. So they, mis they mistook him. This is actually the character from Amon Saga, though. Mm -hmm. uh, who looks, by the way, like Prince Adam from... Uh, um, he man in his outfit and his like white light colored hair and everything. So <clears throat> this is what I uh, I had to say about it. This is the DVD menu. I took a picture of it or whatever, or might have been the DVD. I think it's the DVD menu though. And uh, no, actually I think it is the DVD because there's the manga symbol in the corner. <clears throat> so I said um, I was going to say that based on the art style, you could almost call this Yoshitaka Amano saga, but apparently there's even more that makes that joke appropriate because apparently original story. Yoshitaka Amano. So the the Final Fantasy artist actually like wrote this story with Baku Yume Makura and uh, the this publishing company, right? Um, so then I I shared this to show just how ass this DVD looks on my on my uh, TV. Can I full screen this? Or I have to go to the actual tweet. You'll be able to see it when you get to the blade which is pixelated as hell. Hmm. Can you see how pixelated that is, guys? Mm 
this is kind of hard to see. Anyway, it's super pixelated. So I, I got the uh, the laser disc rip, which looks way better. Um, but it was only in Japanese. And just by the way, this is from uh, this is from uh, the VHS days of like this is an old OVA that was brought over here early on in the anime coming over here time. Also, this mm -hmm. looks like the most uncomfortable fucking grip ever with like the big no. bulge in the middle. Um, but uh, I said, look at how ass this DVD looks on, looks on my TV. And here's how the Japanese laser disc looked for comparison. As the M said, I hope my bootleg looks better. Donjo Bagi says, ah, manga entertainment quality. And Blaze V said, I watched Amon Saga DVD last year, and yeah, it is one of the worst uh, that manga ever put out. So my memory of this, by the way, I think I talked about this on the last podcast. My memory of this is that when I was really getting into collecting, um, back in the day, GameStop used to sell used DVDs. Like, so people would come in just like they would get like, you know, you the joke about, wow, I could get like 30 cents GameStop credit for all these, right? When you have like a yeah. whole collection because they gave you almost nothing. But people used to sell DVDs to them all the time. And uh, so I would go to their DVDs and I would go to the anime section and I picked up a lot of shit in my collection back in the day from doing that. And this fucking DVD was in every GameStop at least 30 copies of it in every GameStop for years until I finally said, fuck, I'll buy it. You know, and I, and I bought it and I watched it once. Um, and it was really re like forgettable, but some parts of it were kind of cool. Like the, uh, there's a, um, a city and like a castle and shit that exists on top of this turtle, this giant ass turtle. All right. So there's some cool stuff in it. Other than that, there's nothing else to say. <clears throat> and, uh, I laughed so hard. I was in like a slap happy state, you know, like where you're sort of like, you're not drunk, but you're drunk on sleepiness. When I watched mm -hmm. it with my wife, she and I were both like exhausted. When we watched it. This was so fucking funny that I had to make a reaction gif of it. So there's the King looking out of the porthole and putting his hand on the glass. I don't know why that was so funny to me, but that looks, that's so, it looks like somebody else's hand. I know that's what's funny about it. Like it just looks like it comes out of nowhere, like it's somebody else. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, that's it. That's all I've got to say about Amon Saga. I was hoping because, like I said, I hadn't seen it in forever, and I thought that it would be um, more. I thought there'd be more to say about it, but other than the fact that uh, the character is kind of a Mary Sue. Uh, then they give you this tragic backstory right at the end about how he's avenging his mom's death or something. Um, and the guy who trained him is pretty much um, D from Vampire Hunter D. Uh, <laughs> and he says, I regret that I taught you the way of the sword. And they have this like long drawn out bullshit line about a thousand peacock feathers slayed a thousand dragons and a thousand knights and a thousand. It's like the stupidest thing ever. Very lame. Um, and it's like, it, but it's one of those things, like I said, like it's trying to be edgy and cool. Uh, and that's kind of what it gives it that almost room, almost the room quality version of, of bad, you know, not quite mm -hmm. there. Doesn't, doesn't quite tip into being so bad. It's funny. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm glad I watched it again. Uh, and that's all I got to say about it. Um, this I have fond memories of. I've seen this many times and I know that the next podcast is going to be called something to the effect of. All you have to do is die. Because that's like a line in this. That's really good. Uh, anyway, um, so Reese, do you have anything else you'd like to share before we... Uh... Mm, not really. Um, when is the next podcast? Uh, if I had to guess, I would say next Tuesday. Next because, Tuesday. Because now that, now that my schedule... So he, let me just clarify about my work. Um, I was told by my manager... When volume is low and we're going to unschedule people, we start with the seasonals, then the part-timers, then the full-timers. So the way it was described to me, it is possible to have full-time taken off um, from the schedule. But when I talked to somebody who asked me how it went and if I got full-time or whatever, he said, no, full-time is, I've, I've been full-time for four years. I've never had, a, had them unschedule me. So basically, the only way to lose full time if you get fired. 
Well, I feel like if they had too many full-time employees, like maybe because he's been there so long that he's not going to get unscheduled. Maybe it's still possible for me. But what I'm saying is now that I basically have my 36 hours with a shift differential that makes it like working the 40 hours, now that I have that guaranteed, I probably won't be working in the middle of the week as often. Um, okay. So Tuesday is probably going to be the solid day. Although I'll be real. Why? Because FDM's internet is never good, <laughs> you know? Like, I don't know why why we even try to do that, you know? So, Tuesday, is, it is. Oh, also, shit. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow night, possibly, I'm supposed to be on the Real Sharks podcast. Uh, it's at 8 p.m. Fuck, let me pull it up. Turns out somebody I work with uh, also hosts a podcast. And it's funny because for like ages people were telling me um oh you got him you got to talk to this guy because you guys do like similar stuff you need to talk to that guy and um they kept saying like yeah i'll introduce you to him and then finally eventually he just randomly met me we didn't know each other right and i ended up talking to him that way it was really weird but um let me uh let me pull up his twitter real quick because we're doing sort of a uh cross promotion you know um so i'm i don't know what we're going to talk about but supposedly it's going to be tomorrow at eight uh so it's the real sharks podcast r-e-e-l like film reel um and it's on it is on youtube but it publishes to youtube from their actual podcast platform which is radiopublic.com slash real sharks podcast so let me uh, screen share this and just show you what I'm talking about. I mean, oh, shit, not that. Hold on. I mean, that is it, but I did the entire screen instead of the application window. Okay. So this is uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, that's cool that I can verify that this is my podcast, even though it's not. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so this is, the, uh, this is their podcast, 57 episodes. We're, we're farther along than that. Okay, so this one's an hour. This one's 30 minutes. This is a bonus episode, though. No. So, uh, yeah, so it doesn't seem like it's going to be too terribly long. That's I'm sorry. That was one of the things I was wondering how long they go, because I don't think they go as long as us. Final Fantasy Spirits Within. They only talked for 18 minutes on it. <laughs> okay, anyway, so, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to do that tomorrow. This last, I, last I heard, um, I told them I was available. Uh, so if you guys want to, I'll try to post a link uh, in the OCA podcast group, uh, maybe on the Discord too, but probably just in the group. Um, other than that, I'll see you guys on Tuesday next week, uh, and hopefully we have another opportunity. I don't actually know when Augie's going to – Augie's going to have to be available on his schedule, not on mine, because it seems like now I'm not going to ever have Fridays off anymore, um, except for Anime Expo when I'm going to – use the time off and everything. In fact, one of the reasons why work has been so weird and I was going to have the whole week off is because our paid time off and, uh, and sick time resets in February. So everybody is using up their paid time off and sick time, um, which is weird because it's the same thing. It's literally <laughs> the same thing. It's a different category, but it's the same thing. Um, the only thing is that when you take sick time, you don't lose. They have like a point system for if you're late like if you if you come in late but you come in before lunch you lose half a point. If you leave but you left after lunch that's also half a point. But if you miss the whole day it's a whole point, right? And you can only accrue like four and a half points or something like that before you get fired. Um, but basically, sick time doesn't accrue points, but you get paid for not even working. Paid time off pays you for not working, but you do accrue points. But if you use it at the end of the month here then it doesn't matter because it's about to reset anyway so right now um rather than people taking time off work and putting up the shift that i could usually take up um they're just using their sick time so there's been no work for me uh to pick up uh, but it, like i said it shouldn't matter anymore because having full time is gonna make a big difference anyway now that i'm done rambling about that thank you guys for stopping by um and i'll see you guys what is the next podcast 28th See you guys on the 28th. All right. Take it easy. Bye.